also going to talk about uh, Google Hangouts. We're also going to talk about Listing Cake. We're also going to talk about YouTube. Oh, we're definitely going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about Videolicious because that is a fantastic um, uh, software that you can use to create videos. So we're going to talk about that again, Google Hangouts, Listing Cake, and YouTube. And we're also going to talk about Bomb Bomb and B Screen, which is different methods of communication via uh, video. Uh, now, for those of you that are joining in right now, where are you going to find this document? I'm going to show you where to find this document right now. So if you go to my training website, I do have a training website where I upload all my training information. So if you go to the training website, which is reaz.app, just the way that it's written here, reaz.app, if you go there and then you go to subscription levels and you create a free account, once you create the free account, you will have um, access to that document on the menu. So it's going to be right on the menu. Um, I'm going to show you, uh, let me see, I'm going to show you where to do this. So we're going to create a quick account here. I'm just going to create something really, really quick. One second, okay? Because I want to show you how this goes. So uh, you have to put a username. So I, use, I usually, for usernames, I usually use uh, Disney characters. So I'm going to try, uh, let's see, I already tried Abu Aladdin. So let me try another Disney character. Like, see, uh, uh, let me give me give me one out of my hat right now. I already use Minnie Mouse. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Jesus, I'm running a blank here. All right, so let's try uh, Donald Duck the second. Okay, Donald Duck the second. All right, so the second. So we're gonna use a username. Uh, you need to put a pass uh, 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 email. So I'm gonna use my junk email here, ysolarosayahoo.com. And then you you don't have to put first name last name if you don't want to. And then if you're going to put a password, so we're going to put the password here. So I'm going to show you how easy this is. All right. So you get a free subscription. So you register for a free subscription. And then once you're logged in, I'm going to show you what happens once you're logged in. Um, oops, that's already taken. So I'm going to take one, two, three. All right. So let's try that once again. I think I forgot to put the password. Uh, yeah, I did. Okay. So I just want to show you this really quick where you're gonna find this document so you can download it. And you can do this while we do the training too because it's only gonna take you like a minute or so. All right, so we're gonna log in. And once you're logged in, give me one second. Okay, you go to the task part right here where it says free. And then I'm gonna show you what I have prepared for you guys, all right? So in the task bar, when you go to the menu and you click on free, you're gonna click on this uh, link right here which is COVID-19 resources. So I want you to go to COVID-19 resources once you go to COVID-19 resources, this is where you're gonna find. You're gonna find all of these resources that I put there together for you, okay? Give me one second, let it, let it load it up a little bit here. Okay, let me uh, make them a little bit smaller so you can see them better. Okay, so this is what we have here because we're talking about COVID-19. We're, we're not only talking about video solutions today, we're also talking about resources for you know, the COVID-19 epidemic that we have right now. So in here, you're gonna find a list of all the forms, all the new forms that are related to COVID-19 in SIP forms. So SIP forms has released four forms that you need to be aware of in regards to COVID-19, four. Uh, the first one is called the RLA-CAA, which is an attachment to the listing agreement, the RLA-CAA. The, the next one is called the PEAD form, the P-E-A-D, which is the, um, the basically the instructions on showing properties and so on. And that one is an attachment to the purchase agreement or the listing agreement. It could be either one of those, right? And then you have the uh, CVA and the NUCC, the CVA and the NUCC. So what I have done here in this document, in this folder that you can download, you can download all of the forms in this document here. What you can do here is you can download the form. Now the, the, the forms are in SIP forms. I just want you to know that, that the forms are in SIP forms, that I have a copy of the forms there as, as a sample so you can see them, right? So if you look at item number one here, item number one, one and one, right? In here, you're gonna find the form, which is the PEED, for example, this is what the form looks like, all right? And once again, you can find it in SIP form. So that's the form. This is the RLACAA. Okay, this is the RLACAA. That's what it looks like, right? And here on number one, uh, on, on the first one, is an explanation given by our legal counsel on how the, 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 the forms are to be used, what do they mean, what do they say, how to explain it to people, et cetera, et cetera. So what I have done is I have classified all the forms with their own explanation. So number one, you have an explanation of the form RLA and the PEED, and then followed by the form PEED and the form RLA. 
Then you have an explanation of the CDA and the UCC. Then you have the forms, the CDA and the NUCC right underneath. Then you have an explanation of the AVID. Or then you have the form AVID. Then you have an explanation of the client advisory regarding shown properties. Then you have the forms for the client advisory. Okay, that's, that's the client advisory that was given to us by legal counsel. I've been sharing it in the office with all of our agents. Uh, this one here basically explains to the consumers, to the buyers and sellers and so on, uh, what it is that we're doing in order to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And this is something that you should have your buyers and sellers sign. This is not a form from TIP form. This is a form that our legal counsel put together for us. So I have included that one in the, uh, in the forms right here. And it's form number four, all right? Then form number five, it says uh, a buyer uh, choosing a property uh, sight unseen. If you sell a property sight unseen, we also have our legal counsel has also put together a form that we are required now to sign with buyers and sellers, I mean, with buyers in this case, if they buy a property that is sight unseen. So the form is right there. An explanation of the form is right there as well. And finally, you have uh, today's class, which is virtual uh, video solutions uh, class, which is the class that we're going to cover today. So we're going to cover that class already. So once again, I'm going to repeat, how do you get to this folder? For those of you that are coming late right now, I'm going to show you how to get to this folder. The first thing that you need to do is you need to go to my training uh, website, reac.app. You go there, you create a free account by going into membership levels. You go to base, uh, I'm sorry, you go to free. You create a free account, which is not going to cost you anything. You will also get, uh, you will also get access to all of these things that I share for free, which is my script books, my video trainings, my training calendars, my written courses, my office meeting podcast, my mentoring programs and referral programs and things like that. Well, you don't have to care about those. But anyways, you have all of this access to all of these things here. But once you go into reas.app and you create a free account, what you're going to get is also you're going to get access to this folder by going in the menu and clicking on the COVID-19 resources. So you're going to get access to all of these forms right here. And this is how you get it. If you don't know how to get it again, uh, you can call me, text me, or email me. I will give you an I will give you instructions on how to get there. Now we have to move on to the next part because, like I said, we have a lot of things to cover. Um, I think, um, Ali, are you manning the uh, chat? I think uh, people are sending information through chat. I don't know if I'm going to have time to go through those. But if you can please man the chat, I would really appreciate it. All right. Let's start with the first part. Let's start with the first part. Let's start with um, uh, video solutions. Let's start with Zoom. Give me one second. I click on the wrong button here. Let's start with Zoom. Zoom is the uh, is right now very popular. Now, by the way, Zoom is not the only video conferencing service out there. There's also free conferences, free conference call dot com. There's also um, there's also a few of them. You know, if you go to Google and you put you know conferencing service, it's probably gonna give you like five or six different choices, right? Now, Zoom has become very popular just because of the name, I guess. You know, everybody's like, oh, let's Zoom, let's Zoom. So that's become really, really popular. But once again, Zoom is not the only platform that you can use for video conferences, for virtual tours, and for virtual open houses. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. I'm going to go through all of those steps right now. But if you choose to get into Zoom, Zoom is a good platform. It's not difficult to use. It's very simple to use. And I'm going to show you how to use it right now. So all you have to do is go into zoom.us, which is going to land you on their main page right here. And once you go into zoom.us, you go into plans and pricing right here, plans and pricing. So we're going to go into plans and pricing right now. And you see that you have different options here. If you are a solo agent, that means that you're not teaching classes like I am, right? Or you're not doing big conferences. A free account is absolutely perfect for you. On the free account, you can have up, uh, you can have up, up to 100 participants and you can have up to 40 minutes of time, you know, virtual time that you can use to do your virtual conferences, virtual open houses, and virtual um, and virtual showings as well. Okay, so Zoom free is, is, is perfect for you. Like I said, if you are not doing like this type of meetings that we're doing that are two hour long, you know, you, you don't need to have a pro account. A free account is basically fine for you. So what you do is you sign up and it's going to ask you obviously for uh, your username and password and so on. Or if you want to sign up with Google, I would highly recommend that if you sign up, sign up with your Google account. And the reason why is because once you sign up with your Gmail account 
what gonna, Zoom is going to do is going to basically give you an opportunity to connect Google Calendars, and we're going to go into Google Calendars before the end of this meeting, and I'm going to show you how to use Zoom from the Google Calendar. But if you log in with your Gmail account, and I highly recommend that you do that, you know, that you sign up with your Gmail account, you will have the opportunity to connect Zoom with your calendar. And I'm going to show you how to use that, and it's super easy to use. I've been testing it for the last couple of weeks, and, and super easy to use, and it's very, very good. I'm going to show you the right way to do it. But there's a little glitch on, Zoom ca on, on the Google Calendar that I'm going to show you how to fix, because there's a little glitch. It automatically uh, creates a Google Hangout. Uh, so I'm going to show you how not to do that. All right, we're going to talk. We're going to talk also about Google Hangouts in a little bit, but I just wanted to mention that up front. So you sign up for an account with Zoom, right? And now you're going to go into Zoom. Now, before that, um, let me digress a little bit here. Why do you need to have a Zoom account? Well, if you're going to post a virtual open house, or you're going to create a virtual showing or a virtual open house, you will need a platform that supports, you know. Uh, a conference, you know, virtual conferencing, and that's what Zoom is, okay? Once again, Zoom is not the only one, but it's the most popular right now. So we're gonna go step by step here, all right? So the first part of the step is obviously to create a Zoom account. Once you have created the Zoom account, you are going to sign into your account. So I'm gonna sign into my own personal account right now, and that I use for the office meetings and so on and so forth. So like I like you say like you see here uh, you have access you can uh, access it with a username and password I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna go into sign in with Google okay I'm gonna sign in with Google and my credentials have already been uploaded I believe so I don't have to use a password but I will use my uh, Google account to log into this one and so it's this one right here I have different emails for different things as you can tell I'm a trainer so I have different emails for different accounts and so on so once you go into Zoom. Uh, the, the next thing that you want to do once you go into Zoom is you want to go into this button right here that says meetings, meetings right here. This is where you want to be. You want to go into a meeting. You want to create a meeting, right? So the next thing that you do after you, uh, you click on meetings is you create a new meeting. So we're going to create a new meeting. So we're going to start from a scratch here. And in here, you're going to put the topic of the meeting. So in this case, if you're doing a virtual showing on a property, Let's say, for example, you're doing a virtual show on a property. I have a listing right now that we can use as an example, right? Uh, 7514 Buell Street, okay, Buell Street in the city of Downey. So I'm going to show you how to do this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my dashboard in the MLS. So now I'm going into Matrix. I'm going to go inside of Matrix right now. So I'm going to show you how that is right now. Give me one second. Let it load it up a little bit. So uh, PW Villa Gax. I always uh, screw up my... Uh, password here. I hope I don't do it. Let's see. Did it work? Does it work? Does it work? Does it work? Okay, let's give it a second and see if it works. Okay, wonderful. So right now, what I'm doing right now is I'm going into um, the MLS and I'm going to have uh, one of my listings that we're going to pretend that we're going to do a virtual house, a virtual open house on one of my listings. So we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to go into matrix from here. Now, if you don't have a listing, I'll, 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 tell, I'll tell you in a second how to do this if, you, if it's not your listing. But if it is your listing, we're going to do it as if it was my listing, right? So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into my matrix. I'm going to go into my matrix. That's where my listings are going to be. I'm going to go into my listings, all right? And then I'm going to pull out the information for the listing on UL, which is this one right here, the first one. It's called UL. It's straight in Downing. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use copy and paste. By the way, guys, I use copy and paste a lot. Like, I'm lazy. You know, I don't like to type, to be honest with you. I do type, and I type a lot because that's my job. But I don't like to type, to be honest with you, so I use copy and paste a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this information here, the, the address of the property. I'm going to go back to, um, to Zoom, and I'm going to paste that information there. You see copy and paste, right? And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the property description, which is right here. I'm going to go to the property description right here. I'm going to copy the property description, right? And you can do this even if it wasn't your, your listing because you have access to the MLS, so you have access to the, um, to the information in the MLS. So I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to put a, a description here. Why is it important to put a description? Because when people go to the registration page, they need to know what they're subscribing for. They need to know what exactly they're, they're going to get, right? So you can also add a few words here that you can say, um, you can say something at the beginning, at, at the beginning of the property description. For example, you can say, um, you know, this, uh, this is the registration 
page for the virtual open house on, and then you can say the, the address of the property, right? If you want to repeat it, you don't have to, all right? Um, uh, which will happen, which will happen, and you don't have to put the date if you don't want because the date is going to show, but I'm still going to put it anyways. Happen on, uh, let's say, uh, April, let's try April, let's try tomorrow, so let's do it tomorrow. So April 26th, or oh, April 26th. 2020 watch and then watch this i'm going to also add my information my personal information if you would like a private private tour oops tour of this property please call me uh or text me call me text me text me at 562-762-9634 or via email at ronnie, ronnie at mayateam.com. So ronnie at mayateam.com or something like that. Now, uh, once you have put the property description and you added that information, I'm going to show you how that looks like on the other side. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is you want to go into the calendar and you want to schedule that virtual open house. We're going to talk about virtual open house right now. Virtual showing is the same, but I'm going to specifically target virtual open houses because I'm going to show you how to do it in the MLS right now. So we're going to do um, a, the uh, meeting is going to be tomorrow, the 26th, and it's going to be from, let's say, from noon. Uh, so most virtual open houses, because remember, you have a limitation of 40 minutes. So most virtual open houses or virtual tours have to be 40 minutes or less if you're using if you're using the free account. So what you want to do is you want to put here, you know, the amount of minutes. Um, it could be, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Uh, uh, well, this is hours, so let's do 40 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes or so. So let's say 30 minutes. So we're gonna start at 30 minutes. Okay, is this a recurring meeting? Um, if you're gonna do open house, let's say two days in a row, the answer is yes, it's gonna be a recurring meeting. If you do a recurring meeting, it's gonna ask you, well, how often do you want to have it and for how long? So in this case, you can say this is a recurring meeting. Let's say if you have it on Saturday and Sunday, you can have it both Saturday and Sunday. So it's gonna be starting on Saturday, ending on Sunday, and it's gonna say it repeats every day you know, for so many occurrences. So let's say we're gonna have two occurrences at that point because it's gonna be Saturday and Sunday, right? So you can do that. All right, you can do that. If this is gonna be a virtual open house, you're gonna be hosting over a two day period or three day period. Guess what, if you're doing one every day of the week, which by the way, if you're doing a virtual open house every day of the week, I give you my thumbs up because you're doing like the right thing, right? You should be hosting open houses or virtual open houses almost every day and promoting them, promoting the heck out of them, right? Bringing more people, creating more leads. Okay, the next thing is this. Registration, do you want people to register? Yes, 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 yes. The answer is yes, you need people to register. Why do you want people to register? Well, if they don't register, it's like they came to the open house and you don't know who they are. It's like it's like you holding a regular open house. You know, you open the doors of the house and then you go get a burger and people just go, go in and out and you don't know who came into the property, right? You want people to register. So yes, registration is required. Now it's gonna ask you, do you want people to register? Uh, now, this, this question here is mostly for um, when you're doing trainings or, you know, trainings that you're doing, et cetera. Do you want people to register every time they log in or you want people to register to one event and be able to open all the events, et cetera? You know, this is something that you can decide, you know, I would suggest that you, re you register people every time they show up in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, the virtual open house. So registration, yes, attendees, uh, attendees need to register for each occurrence they attend, which is the second one, which is fine. Do you require a password? Mm, in some cases, I don't require a password because I think it's kind of unnecessary. If they already register for the event, then you don't need to give them a password. So in most cases, I would not require a password. So I take that off. Uh, in regards to video, do you want to um, do you want do you want the video to be shown by you? The answer is yes, of course. That is the purpose of you being uh, doing the virtual open houses by you basically showing the video. So the answer is yes to that. Yes, I want to be, you know, I want to be the ability to see the video. Do you want the ability to see other people in the video? You know, do you want the ability for participants to show their video? The answer is yes or no. That is basically up to you if you want that, uh, if you want the ability to have people show in the video or not. My answer will probably be yes, you know, because I want to see their face. I think it's important that we see face to face, you know, each other face to face. And I think that's important. So I would suggest that the answer is yes, but that's totally up to you. 
Now, uh, doing it in by computer, by telephone, or by both, leave it as both, because people will always have a choice to log in to, to hear either by telephone or, com or computer audio, or in this case, if you're using a phone, they also have the ability to listen to this by phone. So the answer is both, okay? Now, it says here, enable, um, enable joins, uh, enable uh, uh, people to join before the host. That is that, would you have the ability for people to log in before you actually log in? And the answer is yes or no, that's totally up to you. If, uh, if the answer is no, what Zoom is gonna do is gonna give them a screen that says, um, this meeting has not started yet. And basically it's gonna prompt them to still try again in a few minutes. Basically that's what it does. If, if the answer is yes, I want to join in, all they're gonna see basically is a blank screen uh, until you join in basically. So that's, that's totally up to you how you wanna manage that. Um, mute participants upon entry. Um, I wouldn't, if you're doing a virtual open house, I wouldn't mute participants. I want to, because uh, if they come in and they're muted, they may not be able to unmute themselves because they don't know how to use it. Uh, so what happens is you want to have the ability to talk to them when they come into the, uh, into the virtual open house. So I would not use this feature. Now we as trainers use this feature because when we have 40, 50, 60, 70 people in the, in the training, we don't want everybody talking and this background noise in the back, right? So we mute everybody. But for you doing a virtual open house, I think muting is not a good option. So you should leave it alone. So and we're gonna cover this once again in a second. Uh, enable waiting room. En enable waiting room, I don't like it. And the reason I don't like it is because what happens is that people come in and Zoom says, well, the meeting is starting, but you have, you, the host, have to approve people to come into the meeting. And I don't like that, you know, because then you would have to go to each one of the people that are coming into the meeting and you would have to approve them to walk into the meeting. And that is not a good thing to do. So, and do not enable the waiting room, okay? Let's just leave it like that. Don't, don't touch it, all right? Um, it says only authenticated users can join. Okay, so this is what this is. If you click off this button right here, that means that the people have to have a Zoom account. That means that they have to register for a Zoom account in order to attend the virtual event. That is not a good thing because you already asked them to register for the event. You don't have, you cannot, you should not, not cannot, but you should not force people to have to register again for a Zoom account or even to register for a Zoom account because that is completely unnecessary. So the answer is no, leave it alone, don't touch it, all right? And the next part is record the meeting automatically. If you want to record the meeting on your phone, your computer, or in the cloud, in this case, in the case of the phone, I think it's gonna be in the cloud because it's gonna take too much memory from your phone. So we'll, you probably need to, um, you probably need to uh, record it in the cloud because they are, give you that opportunity to record in your computer or to record in the cloud. So if you're using a phone, probably recording on the cloud is, is better. If you're using a computer, like I use a computer, I, I record it in my computer, yes? Hey, All right. Ron, hey Ron, yes. sorry to disturb you. Uh, That's okay. Going back to your registration yes. on yes. my registration, it doesn't yes. give it doesn't give me extra options. Uh, by a registration where uh, you're talking about this one right here, registration required. Correct. It doesn't give you those extra options. No, sir. All right, and the reason why they, it doesn't give you that extra option is probably because my account is a paid account and your account is a free account, and no. probably that's the reason why. No, no my, mine's paid too. Your, yours is paid too. Well, I have no idea why, my buddy. <laughs> so you may want to check with someone on that because I have no idea. It's always been there for me, so I don't know. <laughs> no, all right. So, okay, so we go, or let's do, uh, again, from the top to the bottom. We're going to go step by step from top to the bottom. I'm going to go a little bit slow, slowly on this, okay? First, uh, first thing, topic. What is the topic? The address of the property. If you're doing a virtual showing or you're doing a virtual open house, you want to have the property address on the topic so they know what property you're talking about. Description, you can copy and paste the description from Matrix. So you can go to Matrix, you can easily copy and paste the description, make any changes that you want. Um, I would also recommend that you, you double put the, in there the address of the property, the dates. You don't have to do it, but I'm kind of like obsessive compulsive. So I would put it in there just to make sure that it's in there. And I would also give people the opportunity if they choose to, to contact me instead of do a, to, for, to do a, a private tour. And I think that's important to giving people the opportunity to do a private tour. Maybe, maybe they come into the page and they say, well, the open house is going to be on Saturday from 12 to 1, 
and I'm working on Saturday from 12 to 1. I cannot attend this open house from 12 to 1 on Saturday because I'm working. We'll give the opportunity to people also to register for a private tour or even a private showing by virtual, uh, by, by what we call a virtual showing, right? You can do that as well. So giving people that opportunity, I think is important. Then you need to put the dates and times where the event is gonna be. Oh, big mistake that I always make, guys, you gotta be careful with this. Whenever I put 12 o'clock, I, it always defaults by a.m., which is basically midnight. You got to be careful with that. If you're going to put 12 o'clock, you need to make sure that it's 12 p.m. instead of 12 a.m. because I know that I have done that, that mistake a few times already, and that is not a good mistake to make because if you put 12 a.m., guess what? You're going to be there at 12 noon, and no one is going to show up, right, because the registration says 12 a.m., and most people will not register for a 12 a.m., you know, uh, a open house, uh, you, you, you know, uh, that's understandable. All right, so duration of the event, in this case, 30 minutes, if you're gonna do it in 30 minute increments. By the way, you can have multiple um, Zoom open houses. I don't know if that's recommended or not, um, but you could, you could potentially have different open house events by creating multiple, you know, multiple events in Zoom. And you can have events that last from 12 to 12.30, from 1 to 1.30, and then another one from 2 to 2.30, and so on and so forth. If you want to do that, the problem with doing that would be, how do you market so many events? You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, yes, you can put it in the MLS, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. But how do you really market throughout your social media accounts, you know, multiple events? I'd rather you market one event, and you market really heavily, make sure that you get a lot of people into the event, rather than trying to market six events, you know, at different time intervals, because that's going to be too difficult. That's going to be close to impossible. So focus on one event, try to get everybody into the one event as much as you can and, and go from there. All right. All right. So if the event is a uh, recurring event, then you need to set that up. It's a recurring every day. You know what times, what dates you can do it that way, or you can create separate events altogether. Now, remember, if you create separate events, uh, you're going to be creating separate links as well. So you, you, people are going to have to go to different links. So once again, I would not recommend it, but it's totally up to you if you do that. Uh, you want people to register. The answer is yes, absolutely. You want people to register because if they don't register, you don't know who came to the event and what good does that do, right? Uh, require me password. The answer is no, I'm not going to require a password. Uh, video. Uh, yes or no? For both of them, yes. I'm going to do the video for both of them because I think it's important for people to see us face to face. On the audio, I'm going to click on both, which is fine. Enable join before host. I'm not going to check that out. New participant, I'm not going to check that out. Enable waiting room, I'm not going to check that out. Um, Authenticate users, I'm not going to check that out. And the only one that you may or may not want to check is the one on record the meeting automatically. That is totally up to you. Once I do it, I'm going to save the event. So I'm saving the event right now. And once I save the event, you'll see what happens here. We're going to go into Google Calendar in a second. But this is the event. And if you look at here, this is the registration page right here. This is the URL, what we call the URL. A URL, for those of you that don't know, I know everybody knows what a URL is. But for those of you that don't know what a URL is, it's basically the address of this event on the internet. So on the internet, there's a lot of things. And you can find those things by typing an address. So this is basically the address for that uh, that event. It's like your your home address. Like my address will be 6301 Crescent. You know that that will be my address. This is the address for the event. So this is what you're gonna need. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna first before I go anywhere, I'm gonna copy this uh, link right here. I'm gonna open my Notepad, which I always have my Notepad handy uh, with me because I copy and paste a lot of stuff in my Notepad through you know when I'm working. So I have my notepad right here, so I'm going to copy and paste that because I'm going to need it. I'm going to show you where I'm going to need it in a second. So I'm going to need it. And the next thing that you want to do is you want to also copy the invitation. So by copying the invitation is this one here. I'm going to click on copy invitation. So I'm going to show you where I went. It's right here. It says copy invitation. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to copy the invitation. And once again, I'm going to get my, my trusty notepad and I'm going to paste the uh, invitation right there. I want to have this front and center because I'm going to be using it in the next few minutes, and I wanted to show you where it is. So once that is, okay, so that's the invitation, and then you can start promoting the event. I'm not going to go into Google Calendars right now. I'm going to go into Google Calendars in a minute because I'm going to show you two different ways to, uh, to add the Zoom event into your calendar. I'm going to show you both ways. I'm going to show you starting from 
Zoom and also starting from Google Calendar. So we're going to go through that. But before we go through that, I'm going to show you how to do it in the MLS. So now that you have your event link for registration, what you need to do is you need to go into your listings. I'm going to go into my matrix, my listings again. Now, if uh, now if this is not your listing, for those of you that are doing virtual open houses for other agents, all right, what you need to do is you need to give the other agent the registration link. This one right here, the one we just copied right there, that's the link that you want to give those other agents, all right? This is the link you want to give them so they can put it in the MLS for you. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So the way to do this, how to enter a virtual open house into the MLS. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go into the listing. We need to go into the listing and we're gonna go into edit right here. And once you go into edit, you're gonna click on residential. If this is a residential property, obviously if it's a commercial, then it's gonna say commercial. So we're gonna click on the residential. Then you're gonna go into open houses. You're gonna go into open houses right here, open house. Uh, off, uh, let me see open house, I'm sorry. I lost it there for a second. Open house right here, which is at the end, right here, open house. And this is what you're gonna do. This is so simple, guys. It's not even complicated, watch. So I'm gonna create a new event, all right? So this is a new event. I'm gonna date it, so date and time. So watch this, date is gonna be the 26th, which is tomorrow, okay? And it's gonna be at 12 noon, all right? It's gonna be at 12 noon, and it's gonna, stay, it's gonna stop at 12.30 uh, p.m. So I don't know how to put 12.30 p.m. here. So I guess I'm just gonna type it like that. All right, so now it's gonna be attended by the agent, obviously. And here where it says open house type, they have, a, a CRMLS have already habilitated the type of open house in this case, because CRMLS, remember that it used to be um, attended by, uh, by the seller or the, or the agent, et cetera. And what type of open house it would say broker, uh, broker or public. Now it says virtual public and virtual broker. They have removed the public and broker. And the reason why is because CRMLS is discouraging people from doing actual open houses. Okay, that's the reason why they removed the option to do a regular open house from the system. Now they're only hosting virtual open houses, whether they're public or broker. So in this case, you're gonna use the virtual public right here, and then you're gonna copy and paste the, uh, the uh, registration link. Oops, I think I copied the wrong one. Give me one second here. Let me remove that. Okay, let me remove all of that. So I'm gonna go back to my trusty notepad right here. So let's do that, copy that and paste it right here. All right, there you go. So that's the registration page for this event. And once you do that, uh, you click on submit, submit listing right here. And that's how it's done. Basically, it's super simple. This is like super, super simple. Once again, date of the event, time of the event, uh, attended by the agent, obviously. And then open house type is going to be virtual public. And obviously, it's going to have the URL that you copy and paste it from Zoom. Uh, so that's the URL for registration. Once you do that, you submit the listing. I'm not going to submit it, obviously, because this is just a, a test. But I'm going to submit the listing. What happens after you submit that open house in the MLS? Well, what happens is that CRMLS will distribute that open house to all this, the real estate websites who have the ability to show virtual um, virtual uh, uh, open houses. Zillow is one of them. Trulia, Homes.com, Realtor.com, you know, the giants basically, they all have the ability to show this and they're all gonna have this uh, link embed into their, um, into their uh, description, their property description. So that's what it's gonna show. How else can you promote this event? Now let's talk about how else you can promote this event. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into the URL right here the URL that we copied for the registration. This is your registration page. Remember, this is the registration page right here. So this registration page right here, how do you promote it? Well, you can promote it by Facebook. You can promote it by LinkedIn. You can promote it by Twitter. You can promote it by email. Zoom in the registration page. This is where we are right now, inside of the registration page. Inside of the registration page will give you the opportunity to promote the event via Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and by email which is basically the four most popular ways of doing it. Another way of doing it would be in Instagram. And everybody keeps asking me the question, can we post things in Instagram? And the answer is, is no. Uh, Ali, can you please mute everybody? I see some background noise. Uh, the answer is no, you cannot post it in Instagram. And the reason why is because Instagram, uh, it's a closed system, meaning that they don't allow any third party 
uh, accessing the files within uh, Instagram, at least not yet. Uh, so I don't know if Facebook, who owns Instagram, is going to make changes to that in the future. I don't know. But for right now, Instagram, is, there's no way to automatically post into Instagram, as far as I know, or as far as I can tell, not directly. I know that some apps and things like that have created ways to go around that, like uh, creating macros and things like that to do that. But, uh, but for most, uh, the answer for most, in most cases is no, you cannot post it in Instagram. Can you go into your Facebook account and post from Facebook to Instagram? The answer is yes. So once you have an event in, in, in Facebook, you can actually post it in Instagram. So now we're going to go into the next part. The next part is how do you promote the event? Other than having Matrix promote the event for you, because they will, you know, Zillow, Trulia, Homes.com, et cetera, et cetera. How else can you promote the event? Well, the same way that I've been teaching you guys for years and years and years how to promote open houses in Facebook. The way to do this is by creating a Facebook, um, a Facebook event in Facebook and then paying for promotion. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So let me log into my Facebook account if I can remember my username and password. Oh, wonderful, it's already there. Okay, great. So what you need to do now, now uh, uh, in order to do an event in Facebook, you need to have a business page. Guys, if you do not have a business page, you need to have a business page. You need to have business pages on all the major social media networks. In this case, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and hopefully YouTube, and we're gonna go into YouTube in a little bit. But YouTube may be another another place that you want to um, you want to create events and promote events. But let's talk about Facebook for a second. Facebook also owns Instagram, so whenever you post an event in Facebook, you can also promote it in Instagram. That's how you get the event into Instagram. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to one of the pages, uh, the business pages that I manage. I have a few business pages that I manage. Let me do the one for Maya Team Inc. right now. So let's go into Maya Team Inc. right now. Give me one second, please. Give me one second. Let's go in here. I should have pressed the button before. Uh, for some reason, it's just not moving. Okay, there you go. It's moving now. All right, so once you go into uh, the, the page, this is not the page. Give me one second, please. Oh, yeah, here it is. Okay, I don't know. My internet is moving a little slow here. All right, so once you go into your business page, and I'm talking about your business page now. Give me one second. I think I'm, I'm in the wrong place because right now I'm under notifications instead of the main page. So let's go into the main page, okay? Give me one second, please. By the way, if anybody has any questions so far, I know everybody may have questions. Ali, is there any questions that we need to answer right now? Yes, Ronnie. Um, yeah. Someone asked what happened if I registered my Zoom account already, but not through Google. Can I still use Google Calendar? Yes, yes, you can. Absolutely. So what you need to do, that's a good question to ask. So what you need to do is you need to register your uh, Google account. And to do that, you go in the profile, you go into profile, and then you register your Google account from here. You see, in, uh, you go into edit, or I'm sorry, sign in email right here and then you register your account from there. So yes, the answer is yes, and keep it done easily. In about two minutes, you can get it done. All you have to do is go into profile, go to edit, uh, signing email, put your Gmail account in there. It's gonna send you a link to your Gmail account um, saying, you know, basically, do you accept the fact that we're changing it? And you say yes to that, and from that point forward, you can log in with your Gmail account. Yes, that is a great question to ask. Thank you so much. Any other questions, Sally? Yes, we have two more. Okay. Um, can you show how to stream a Zoom meeting on Facebook at the same time? I think we're going over that right now, correct? Uh, yes, the answer is you cannot stream a Zoom meeting into Facebook uh, while you're doing the meeting. You cannot do that. You can promote the meeting in Facebook, which I'm gonna show you right now. But unfortunately, uh, Zoom and, and Facebook, at this point, I don't think they talk to each other when it comes to streaming. You can do a Facebook live event if that's where the way you want to go, you can do it to Facebook live event. And as a matter of fact, I was going to talk about that later, but let's talk about it now. Uh, you can do a Facebook live event. The only challenge with doing a Facebook live event is that the person who is watching that live event needs to have a Facebook account or needs to have access to a Facebook account. And if they do not have a Facebook account, and some of them may be a little bit concerned about connecting with you through Facebook too, because nobody wants to be prospective, to be honest with you. No one does. No one wants to be prospective, right? So maybe people, 
that will discourage people from joining your Facebook live event uh, just because they need to have a Facebook account and they need to be connected to you via Facebook and some people will not want to do that. So um, it is kind of a challenge. Uh, and once again, Zoom at this point, or as far as I'm concerned, or I know, Zoom does not stream via Facebook automatically. It does not. They don't talk to each other. All right, different platforms. All right, uh, another question, Ali, before I move forward. Uh, someone asked how to share screen. Um, uh, Bonnie, I actually, um, I believe that you can stream from Zoom to Facebook Live. You can. Yes. You can. Okay, wonderful. I didn't know that. All right. Do you know how to do it? Okay, Ali is um, okay. Ali is not responding. So let's move forward because I do have to finish the meeting and there's a lot of things that we need to cover. Ali, you were going to say something? Ali? Yes, Ronnie, it, yeah. it, it works through the Zoom link. We had a class, the last class that we had went through um, how to do it live. Okay. Oh, uh, you did? You do, yes, yes, but okay. um, yeah, but I believe you need an upgraded account to do that. So you cannot, I don't think you can do that through a free account. You cannot do that through a free account. Okay, gotcha. No. All right, all right. Well, uh, you know what? Maybe next class we can talk about that, all right? Uh, as of right now, my recommendation would be to get a hold of Ali and see if she can show you the steps in, in order to get that done. I have never done it that way, uh, so I don't know how to do it that way, okay? All right, so let's keep moving forward. All right, so what you need to do now is you need to promote the event. So we're going into event promotion, right? How do you promote the event, right? And how do you promote the event is by creating an event in Facebook. Now, watch this. This is the mistake that I always tell people that they do. Uh, you go into Facebook and you create a post and you post something. You're like, I'm going to have an open house and you post it, right? The problem with creating a post is that the post does not give you the opportunities that you have when creating an event. Let me tell you which opportunities. With an event versus a post, okay, event versus post, all right? An event, you can put the address of the property, you can put the dates and times of the event, you can put a link in order to register, and then you can create an ad based on that event because Facebook gives you the opportunity to create events because they want you to spend money. They want you to create an ad. That's, that's the whole purpose of allowing you an opportunity to create an event on Facebook is because they want you to, to pay them money, right? Which is fine, right? Uh, so watch this. So Facebook will allow you to do that opportunity. That, all of those things that I just mentioned right now, you cannot do with a regular post or, or if you can do them, it's going to be cumbersome. It's not going to be exactly the way you need it to be. So my recommendation, if you're doing, if you're hosting a virtual open house, or even, even if you're hosting a virtual tour of a property, not, uh, not only an open house, but also a virtual tour, because you can do all virtual tours as well, you know, a small you know, five-minute tours and whatnot, you can promote it in Facebook. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing that you need to do is you need to go into events right here on your main uh, uh, page, your business page, that is. And then you need to create a new event by clicking on this button that says create event. Super simple right now, right? Now let me show you how to go through the process of creating the event. So the next thing that you need is you need to put a picture of the property. So I'm going to go back to my property here. So my listings. And I'm going to go into my listings. I'm going to go into my listing right here. And I'm not supposed to do this because uh, the pictures once uploaded into Matrix are copyrighted. But since this is my property, my account, I'm just going to take it from here. So I'm going to save the image from uh, Matrix. And once again, you're not allowed to, you're not supposed to do this. Uh, what you're supposed to do is get the agent to send you, uh, you know, that picture that you need. So I'm going to do that. And now I'm going to go into Facebook here again. And we're going to, while it's loading the picture, give me one second. All right. Now I'm going to put the picture here. All right. So we're going to put the picture here. So this is the picture right now. I think this is the one, right? Let me see. I think this is the one. Let's see. Oh, it says image. Okay, the image is too small. All right, so I'm gonna have to choose it from my folder. Give me one second. Let me go back to my folder. I have the original picture in my folder somewhere. So real estate, real estate, uh, Downey, here it is. Uh, BOL, here it is. Photos, here it is. Okay, let's try this one here. All right. So I'm going to upload the picture. 
and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go step by step on the things that uh, the Facebook is asking me to do. So let's while it's loading the picture, let's do the next one. So event name. Well, in this case, you can call it virtual open house because that's what it is, right? So a virtual open house. So virtual open house. All right. So I'm gonna title it virtual open house. I don't know how to spell house. All right. The location. This is the location. Watch this. This is where you can put the location of the property. So in this case, we're gonna put the location of the property, which is this right here. And you can put the location of the property. You see why I love uh, events is because you can put actually the location where the property is. Then the description, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We're gonna go to matrix, we're gonna copy and paste the description. You see how easy this is? Copy and paste, copy and paste. I love copy and paste. All right, copy and paste. Now, Facebook may say that the, uh, the description is too long, Sometimes they do that, so if it's too long, you're gonna have to edit it. Um, they haven't said anything right now, so I guess it's fine. Uh, so let's go to the next, the category here. The category is gonna be on their, um, it's gonna be on their housing, which I think they remove housing, but I think, um, I, 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 yeah, I think they remove housing. It used to be housing in here on the list. They don't have it. I didn't see it last time I did it. So I'm gonna choose other. The frequency, whether it's once or daily, the same thing as you do with, uh, with Zoom, Let's say in this case, it's only gonna be once. So it's gonna be on the 26th. It's gonna be at 12 noon, and it's gonna end at, on the 26th at 12.30 p.m. So we're gonna do that, all right? Now it says co-host, you don't have to worry about that. Add schedule, you don't have to worry about that. Kids friendly and all that, you don't have to worry about that. In keywords for right now, let's just use Zillow, because a lot of people are looking for Zillow in Facebook. So Zillow, Craigslist, Trulia, Homes.com, you know, the, the, the giants, basically. So I'm gonna type Zillow as a keyword. And we're gonna be able to add more keywords once we create an, an event um, promotion. All right, so that's that. Okay, now watch this, where it says here, add ticket link, add ticket link. You see this where it says add ticket link? This is where you put the uh, URL for the event. So I'm gonna go back to my trusty uh, notepad. I am going to copy the link and I'm gonna paste it right here under the URL, okay? And then it says on sale now, I don't know if you can change this, but it says on sale now. So that's the event. Uh, and that's how you create the event in Facebook. Let's go down from the top to the bottom. First thing that you do, you upload a picture. Second thing, you give the, um, the event a name. Now it's giving me something that says, oh, you cannot do capitalizations. Okay, so let's do virtual, oh, virtual open house, open house here. All right, so event name, uh, location of the event, that's the address of the property. Description is the description that you took from the MLS. If you want to edit it, make changes, put your name, phone number, whatever, you can do that too. Uh, categories, others, uh, frequency, depending on the frequency that you want. And finally, uh, the keyword is Zillow. And finally, the event link is where the ticket link or the ticket URL, that's where you're gonna put the event link for registration. Okay, so we're done with that event. Uh, we're gonna publish it. So now, uh, let me see, it says, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to change the, uh, the time here. It's 12.30 p.m. I'm always making mistakes with the times. I, I don't know why. All right, so that's that, and we're gonna keep, keep on, keep, click on publish, and now the event is gonna be published. As soon as the event is published, as soon as it's published, Facebook is gonna pop you out with a pop-up banner that says, do you want to promote this event? Do you see? Ah, you see that? Yeah, right there. Why do they do that? Well, because they want to make money, obviously, right? But that, this is a great way to market your event, your event, because you're not only going to be able to market it in Facebook, you're also going to be able to market it in Instagram, which is fantastic. So watch this. So I'm going to boost the event right now, and I'm going to go through the process of boosting an event right now. I'm going to show you the things that you need to do in regards to boosting events, and I'm going to tell you also the mistakes that most people make in regards to event promotions in Facebook. The first mistake that most people make in regards to event promotion is that they put an image with words. You cannot put images with words. Facebook does not allow you to put images with words, and I'll tell you the reason why. Facebook only makes money when people click on the link and they go into the uh, event page. So they charge you somewhere between 25 cents to 45 cents every time somebody clicks on the link. But if on the picture you put a note that says, for example, you know, register here, or call me at this number, or send me a text message or something like that, then what happens is that Facebook feels like people are not gonna be clicking on the link, and if they're not gonna be clicking on the link, they're gonna be losing money. That's the reason why Facebook does not allow you to put, I think the, the ratio is 10%, I think it's 10%, I said, it looks like the words cannot exceed more than 10% of the actual image or something like that. 
So the first thing that, that most people get once you submit a, 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 a promotion or you cre uh, create an ad, I'm sorry, is that you get a rejection notice from Facebook. They send you an email with a rejection notice. It says your ad does not comply to our regulations and standards. And then you have to figure out, and they give you a list of things that, that you know, regulations and things like that. You have to figure out what the problem is. Well, one of the problems is that you're putting words and pictures. Do not put words and pictures, all right? That's the first thing. Do not put anything in the property description that directs people to call you, text you, email you, or directs people to go into a, into a URL to register. Why? For the same reason, because if people are looking at the information there, they're not gonna be able, they're not gonna click on the link, and if they don't click on the link, Facebook is not gonna make any money, so they don't like that. You gotta make sure you don't put that. That's the second reason, right? That's the second reason why your ads get rejected. I'm gonna show you now the third reason why ads get rejected. The third reason why ads get rejected and it says here the text is too long, so we're going to have to remove some of the text. I'm not going to spend time editing. I'm just going to cut it down here for, for that. All right. The next thing. This is the next thing, the reason why, and this is the major, major, major reason why ads get rejected in Facebook is because you did not add a special category, the housing special category. Let me explain you how that goes. The Department of HUD, Housing and Urban Development, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, they sue Facebook, they sue them, they sue them because Facebook before they used to uh, be able, you, you, you were able to filter people by pretty much anything like, you know, uh, uh, familiar relationships, marital status, race, uh, uh, language, uh, you know, uh, you know, home ownership, etc. So the Department of Heart said, no, 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 wait a second, Facebook. If you're sending out ads into the public, you cannot discriminate against the protected classes. You cannot discriminate against race, language, uh, skin color. You cannot discriminate against uh, marital status. You cannot discriminate, you know, about all of these protected classes. So what happens is that Facebook uh, was, was forced, basically, to not only to remove those categories, so now you cannot filter by people who are married or unmarried or the age of the race or whatever. You cannot do that anymore. But not only that, they also, as, a, as an agreement to the Department of HUD, what they had to do is they had to add this other question here, asking the person who's posting the ad whether or not this is a special ad category. And the answer for you, the answer is always yes, because you're a real estate agent, you're promoting real estate properties, you cannot discriminate. So the answer to this is yes, this is a special ad category in housing. So you have to check that out. All right. So. This is the main reason why most uh, posts, uh, most promotions are being rejected right now. People call me all the time like, oh, Facebook rejected my promotion, I don't know why. Did you check out the special ad category? Oh, I don't know, I've never seen it. Okay, there you go, that's the problem. So that's the next reason why people, that why Facebook uh, rejects the event. All right, let's go to this one here. The next one is people and audiences. How do you promote this to, uh, to this event to the people that you wanted to see? Well, the first thing that you want to do is you want to create a radius of the people who can see this ad. So the radius of the people that can see this ad. For some reason, it shows Istanbul in there. I have no idea why. I guess my computer thinks that I'm in Istanbul right now. I don't know why. So I'm going to remove that one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the address of the property once again. So I'm going to have it here. I'm going to copy and paste the address. One second. So I'm going to put the address of the property. Uh, let me see. Select location. This is something new. Okay, wait a second. Uh, let me click on that. Actually, I'm just going to type it. 7514 UL Street in Downing. Okay, there it is. Okay, I don't know if when I copy and paste it, it didn't work. All right, so watch this. So you type the address of the property. You put 15 mile radius. The, the, that's the minimum that Facebook will allow you. You can go more than 15, but don't do more than 15 because that's going to be too much. So you do 15 mile radius. And then the only targeting that I use, the only extra targeting that I use in regards to this, I do not use any of the protected classes tar a, a keywords. What I use is I use targeting for real estate. The most common and the most useful and the most the people are looking for the most is Zillow. Yes, I know we don't like it, but guess what consumers do? Zillow is the one keyword that most people are looking for when it comes to housing. And I put Zillow in there. Now, the reason I put Zillow in there is the following reason. The reason, see how many people are looking for Zillow uh, in, in Facebook? 37 million people are looking for Zillow in Facebook right now. So anyways, 
The reason why is Zillow, because also when I click on Zillow, I click on suggestions, and now it's gonna give me a list of all the other keywords that relate to Zillow. So you can pick from the list. Trulia, homes.com, house hunting, first time home buyer, real estate, property finder, single family detached property, starter home, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can choose as many keywords as you want. I would recommend not to choose more than six or seven. You wanna keep it you know, kind of like tight. You don't want all the keywords in the world. So once you have done that, you in essence have created your first ad. So let's go down from the top again. Let's do it from the top. How do you create an ad on Facebook? Well, the first thing that you do is you boost an event. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. There's a button there. But, but the screen pops out as soon as you create an event. The next thing that you do is you you um, you edit the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the event days. How many days? Oh, here's another question people ask me. How many days before the event should I promote it? I would suggest somewhere between five to seven days before before the event so you have enough time for people to actually see the event. Uh, so you need to select the amount of days that you're going to promote it. So in this case, um, this one ends tomorrow, so uh, there's no dates available anymore uh, because we put it that the uh, event ends tomorrow. But if you put an event that ends next, uh, next Saturday, you're going to be able to choose how many days you want to event to run. And then the total budget or the total amount of money that you're willing to spend on that event. Uh, my suggestion would be somewhere between the 20 to $40 to promote an event. If you can do more, do more. 20 to $40 over four or five days should be you know, enough, all right? And basically it says, uh, if I were to invest, let's say um, five days, uh, let's say $40 five days, uh, that's, uh, a, let's say $8 a day. So that would be about, let's say $5 a day, for example, that would be about 4,000 to 12,000 people will see that ad every single day for the next five days. And I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. So my suggestion would be uh, an, promote an event about five to seven days before the event and spend somewhere between five, you know, three to five dollars a day promoting that event. And I think that would be good. And you obviously would make changes along the way, et cetera. There's also a Facebook pixel. I'm not gonna talk about that because that's super complicated and I'm gonna lose most of you. So forget about that. And then finally, uh, the event at uh, the uh, people in audience is the next thing that you need to do. And the people in audience, you're gonna select 15 mile radius of the property address. And basically that's how you create an event. I also have a video in my training website under online marketing. Uh, it's a 45 minute video that I explain this step by step. Also, I did explain it right now, but if you want more, you can go to my uh, training website, go into online uh, video training and you'll find it there. All right, so once you boost the event right here, now your event is gonna be boosted both in Facebook and Instagram because Facebook and Instagram are one and they, uh, Facebook, whatever event, whatever advertising you create on Facebook, it goes directly into Instagram. All right, do you have any questions before I continue? Ali, do we have any questions before I continue? Yes, Ronnie, somebody asked if you can hold a virtual open house on a listing that's not yours. Yes, the answer is yes, yes. As a matter of fact, the Book of Realtors says that we, um, section number four of the Book of Realtors says that uh, brokers, uh, the realtors need to cooperate with one another. So the answer is yes, you need to cooperate with other brokers uh, uh, as long as there's opportunity. And I know the biggest challenge most people have is most realtors have is having agents uh, allowing them to do events on their properties. And here's my rule of thumb, you know, as, as of my last count, it took us almost 66 phone calls to get one open house. So, so when agents come to me, Ali, I'm sorry, but this is the truth. When agents come to me and they say, oh, I can't find any open houses. My first question is, how many agents did you call? And they say four or five. And I said, well, go call another 60 because it's gonna take you about 60 phone calls before you actually get an open house, uh, somebody to allow you to do an open house on the property. So, so I guess, guess what? Yes, you can do open houses on other people's listings as long as the listing agent and the broker agree to that, okay? And all you have to do is get something in writing, an email, text message works is fine, where they say, yes, it's okay to do an open house on my property. So yes, the answer is yes. Any other question regarding that? I know a lot of people have questions regarding that. So any other question? Uh, someone requested if you can just slow down a little bit. I know, I know you have a lot to share and you're pressed for time, but um, just a, a little bit. And it is being recorded, everyone. So um, we will yeah. share this afterwards. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's always my challenge as a trainer because uh, my trainings are three hour longs and they give me two hours <laughs> or two hours and a half in this case. So I, ha I do have to go a little bit fast, but yes, I apologize for that. I'll try to slow down a little bit. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna slow down a lot. Let me, that's me slowing down. <gasps> Woo! I'm gonna slow down a lot. All right, so this is what we're talking about. Now, I'm gonna recap because I always recap everything that we're doing, all right? So I'm gonna recap again. So let me uh, cancel that. I'm not gonna save it. So cancel that. I'm not gonna save it all. Ronnie, I don't know if you can hear, but you are cutting off right now. The, your audio cut off, so we didn't hear your recap. I think he jumped off and he'll jump back on shortly to fix uh, audio. So just please wait. Also, I, I provided a link in the chat that uh, you can use to see if your Facebook ad follows the 20% rule. I think Ronnie's back on. Just unmute yourself, Ronnie. The, the internet here at the uh, training center shut down for a minute. No, I don't know why, but I'm back already. Okay. So let me go back to share the screen. Okay. So you were talking about the 20% rule, right? On the, uh, on the, uh, on the pictures. Is that correct? Yes. That we, I provided a link in the chat chat where they can check to yeah. see if it follows the rule. And then if you can recap again, because you cut off when yeah. you did your yeah. recap. Yeah, all right, so what we're, what we're doing right now in the recap is that we're talking about how to promote a virtual open house in Facebook and Instagram. That's what we're doing right now. So in order to promote a, 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 a Facebook event, and you can see the screen, right, Alice? Is the screen is okay? Yes. You can see this. Okay, wonderful. So to promote an event in Facebook, what you need to do is you need to go to your business page. You need to have a business page. If you don't have it, go get it because they're free. They're, they don't cost anything. Facebook promote business pages because they want you to spend money. Uh, the next thing that you need to do is you need to go to create an event. You click on create an event and basically you, ba you basically follow the steps on creating an event. It's not that difficult. I know it sounds difficult because I've been talking for like an hour about this, but it's not that difficult. You put the picture, you put the name, you copy the location or the address of the property, you put the description, the categories, the dates and times, et cetera, and, the, and, and all of this. And then finally, you add the, the ticket link, all right, the link for the, yeah, for the event, the registration page in this case. And that's what, how you create an event. Once you have created an event and you click on the button that says create, the next thing that happens automatically is that Facebook is gonna ask you to boost the event. Now, if the window for boosting an event does not show up automatically, you find it right here. It's right here, you can't miss it. It's right on the top right there, you can't miss it. It's right here. And this is where you go to boost an event. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something because most people say, well, I, I created a Facebook event and I think that's enough. That is not enough. And I'll tell you the reason why that is not enough. Because if you create a Facebook event, if you don't promote it, the only people that see the event is your friends and family. And quite honestly, you don't have that many friends and family. All right. You, what you want to do is you want to target an audience. And how do you target an audience is by creating an ad and spending some money on the ad. I'm not saying, you know, spend a lot of money on the ad, but you want to spend somewhere between three to five dollars a day for the next five days to promote an event to get people to, to register. This is by far the best strategy that I have found that works for me in regards to promotions is using Facebook event marketing. Uh, and the reason why it works is because you're promoting it not only in Facebook, but you're also promoting it in Instagram. All right. So that's that. Uh, any questions regarding that before I move on? Because I'm going to move on from this now. Okay. 
So I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to delete this ad because obviously this is just um, this is just uh, a test. So I'm going to delete it. I don't want nobody right now bugging me for this. Okay, cancel the event. Okay, I'm going to cancel the event right now. If you have to cancel the event, you can cancel it. So I'm going to delete it. So confirm that. All right. Now let's move on to the next part. So I show you already how to create an event in Zoom. All right. So we went through how to create an event in Zoom uh, by going into meetings and creating a new meeting. It gives you a link, and I'll show you the link right here. It gives you an invitation that you can send out. If you go to the link page, if you go to this link page that they give you, through the link page that they give you, let me go back to the link page right here. Through the link page that they give you, you can also promote that page through Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and via email by mailing it to people, right? It's going to give you uh, a, a something that you can send via mail. But if you want to promote a Facebook, once again, posting it in Facebook is not enough. You also have to create an event promotion. And, and I show you the ways to do that. So let's go to the next part. Now, I'm going to show you how to connect uh, Zoom with your Google Calendar. Zoom with your Google Calendar. Now, in order to connect Zoom with your Google Calendar, you're going to need an additional thing. And you're going to need a, a plugin. It's called a plugin. So you need to download a plugin into your computer. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So all you have to do is go into Google and put a uh, Zoom Google Calendar plugin, plugin right there. So you put a uh, Zoom Google Calendar plugin, and and there you go. It's going to give you. Um, let me see. Not, don't don't use Zapier for that. Uh, it's this one right here. It says Zoom Scheduler Google Chrome, and you're going to download this. This is a plugin for Google Chrome, and, and you should be using Google Chrome because it's compatible with Google. So Google Chrome is a plugin that you download into your computer, and once you download it into your computer, it's going to synchronize your Zoom meetings with your calendar events. So this is the plugin right here. I'm going to show it to you right now, and this is the way to do it. So there you go. I already have it, so I'm now going to download it again, uh, but this is the Zoom scheduler. So two things that are going to happen when you do this. The first thing is that you're going to have the ability to connect your meetings through the Google Calendar. Uh, if you go to your meetings right here, you see where it says here, add to Google Calendar. You're going to have the ability to add it to the Google Calendar. But not only that, because you know Zoom can do that also if you have your Gmail account connected to Zoom, like I explained to you at the beginning. So Google Calendar will be able to do that. But uh, the next thing that is going to happen is that you can actually create events directly from Google Calendar without having to go into Zoom, if that's what you want to do. I'm not saying you should do it that way, but I'm saying that you have the ability to do that. So once you download the extension, I'm going to show you how to do this. It's super, super easy. All you have to do is go to your Google Calendar, click on Create, all right, create an event, right? And then you're going to create the event. Um, I'm going to, uh, the event name is going to be obviously the address of the property, so I'm going to copy that again. So the address of the property. And now before you do anything else, don't do anything on this screen right here because this screen doesn't give you too many options. What I want you to do is I want you to click on more options, click on more options right here, more options. And this is where the whole page is going to be for the options for Google. And you see where it says here, make it a Zoom meeting. You see that button that says make it a Zoom meeting. All you have to do after you fill out the information, oh, let's do the information just to make sure that we do it right. You have to fill out the information for the Zoom meeting, which is going to be uh, tomorrow at 12 o'clock, and it's going to last from 12 to 12.30, all right? And, and then you go here, don't add a location. You click on the Make It a Zoom Meeting. Watch what's going to happen when I click this button. As a matter of fact, let me move here a little bit so you can see it better. I'm going to click on the button, and bam, 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 bam. Everything is created from here. You see that? The whole thing is created from here. So you can use Google Calendar to create Zoom events straight from Google Calendar. You don't even have to go to uh, Zoom to do that. The ability that you have in regards to this now is that you can copy and paste addresses to invite people. So I don't know which contact database you use, but I, I do use a contact database. And let me see if I have a list that I downloaded. I think I downloaded a list a couple of days ago. Uh, give me one second here. Uh, attendees. OK, this one here. Let's try this one here. I'm just going to try this one here. I want to show you. So if you have your contacts in any contact database that you have your contacts, and that could be, you know, Lions Desk, everybody talks about Lions Desk, Lions Desk, Wise Agent, Top Producer, IFACT, uh, Resio, any of the contact database out there. 
if you have a contact database, there is a way to export people from your contact database. So uh, once you export it, they're gonna come up some, something like this. They're gonna come up like a, like a list like this. And all you have to do, watch what I'm gonna do right now. All I have to do is copy the email addresses from the spreadsheet, watch this, and then go here to Google and paste them in here. And all I have to do is paste the addresses. You don't have to edit anything. You don't have to put commas, separate them, or do anything. All you have to do to invite people into this event is to copy and paste it, and they will automatically get an event notification from Google. They can, I love it more, and, I, and the reason I love it more than I love um, is doing the registration page is because in the registration page, you, the, the person who's registering, they have to put their name and phone number and email address and all, that, all, this, all the things, right? But if you send it via Google Calendar, Google Calendar pre-fills uh, all the items, so basically, if I were to receive a Google Calendar event, when I click on yes, I want to attend this event, it automatically pops out my name and email and, uh, and email address and everything. And all I have to do is click on save and it's gonna save it directly into my Google Calendar. So it will save it directly into my Google Calendar if I have one or my iCloud Calendar or my Yahoo Calendar or whatever, if I have one. So this is another great way to promote it uh, via email is by sending these notifications to your contacts in your contact database. Copy and paste the email addresses. You don't have to do anything else other than copy and paste. And once you click save, I'm not going to click save, by the way, because then everybody will get this, right? But once you click save, I think actually they give you a screen before that. Let me give it a try. I hope I don't screw it up. So I'm going to click on save right now. And, and there you go. It's going to give me a screen that says, would you like to send invitation emails to Google Calendar guests? And you click on send, and I'm not going to click on send, obviously, because this is just a test. But once you click on send, all the invitations are going to go to the contacts, and those contacts can click on the button, accept the invitation, and they will automatically get enrolled into this uh, into this uh, a, a virtual open house or, or whatever you're doing right now. So let me click on that. Do not send, obviously, and I'm going to remove all of those. So I'm going to delete all of those in a second. So anyway, so that's how you create a Zoom meeting using Google Calendars. Absolutely love it. Now, if you want to do the Zoom meeting that you already created into Google Calendar, this is what you need to do. I'm going to show you how to do it now from the invitation that you got. Remember that invitation that we got, the invitation uh, uh, thing that we got from Google from Zoom that I copied into my notepad? I'm going to use it right now. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So watch this. I'm going to do the event. I'm going to click. Um, I'm going to put the address once again. Okay, so this is the address of the event. Uh, oops, wrong key. Uh, I'm going to put the address right here. I'm going to go into um, a, a, the date, which is going to be, um, what is this date? What is this show in 2019? Wonderful. All right, hold on. Uh, April, April 26th. Okay, it's April 26th. The event is on April 26th. The date is going to be 12 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. I'm going to go into more options. Okay, I'm going to go into more options. I always go into more options. And I'm going to show you this right now. I'm going to click uh, the, uh, on the location here. On the location, I am going to paste the, uh, the, the uh, where is my notepad? Give me one second. I think this thing is too big. Let me make it a little smaller. Okay. On my notepad, on my notepad here, I'm going to copy the registration link. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it on the location. I'm going to paste it on the location. And then on the description, I'm going to copy the invitation that I got from Zoom, that I copied from Zoom. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it right here under the invitation. And that's how you copy and paste the information. If you don't want to do it straight from Google Calendar, the event that is, if you want to do it from Zoom, this is how you copy and paste the information. The process is basically the same. All you have to do now is copy and paste the addresses of people. And if the people are in your Google contacts, you basically can start typing their names and then the, the address is gonna show up there. So let's say, for example, if I type, if I type Mona, I don't think I have Mona on, on this calendar. Uh, this is a different calendar. This is not my personal calendar. It's, some, it's a calendar that I use for training. So I don't think I have it here. But if you have your Google calendar connected to your Google contacts, you can just start typing names and the names are gonna appear there. And you can also send reminder notifications from here which is important and things like that. So this is yet another way of doing it in Google Calendar is by doing this, all right? And I love Google Calendar because it connects with Zoom, number one, and number two, because you can 
download a list of contacts emails and you can copy and paste them on here and once you save it all of those people are going to receive a notification and they can auto log in into the uh, into the the thing into the seminar or the virtual open house in this case so um that's a that's perfect do we have any questions regarding zoom and google calendar do we have any questions regarding zoom and google calendar uh, there's no questions, Ronnie. Um, okay. I just inserted uh, instructions on how to change the settings for Facebook Live. Streaming. Wonderful. Yes. Okay. All right. Fantastic. All right. So let's see. We're going to recap. All right. We're going to slow down a little bit. So we're going to recap. So we talked about how to create a Zoom meeting by creating a Zoom account, by going into meetings, logging in with your gmail account which i recommend that you do your gmail account so you can connect google calendar to it once you log in you can create an event i'm not going to go through the process but you can create an event once you have created the event the question is how do you promote the event well the way to promote the event once again is by going into the page where the event is hosted right here and you can click on the buttons for facebook linkedin twitter and email and you can actually promote the event from there that's one way to do it Another way to do it is to create an event in Facebook and spending some money, not a lot of money, spending some money promoting that event in Facebook and Instagram. And I think that's, that's a, by far one of the best ways that I know to promote events online is by doing that. The other way to promote the event, obviously, is by going into Matrix and adding the event into the open house. If it's your listing, all you have to do is go into edit your listing. So let me go into my matrix here, my listings. And all you have to do is click on the edit button right here, the edit button right here. And then once you go into the edit button, go into open houses and you can post the information into the open house. And that's gonna promote it through Zillow, Trulia, homes.com, realto.com, et cetera, et cetera. So what are we doing here? What are we doing? Look guys, if you really want to be successful at doing virtual open houses, it's not so much about doing the virtual open house, it's about promoting the virtual open house. I always tell everybody, uh, it, 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 it's like doing an open house that nobody comes to. If Why are you doing an open house that nobody's gonna come to? If nobody's gonna come to it, what is the sense of doing an open house? And, and people come to the open house when they're invited to come to the open house. That's my whole thing. If you guys have attended my working with buyers class, I talked to you about this in length on how to invite people to the open houses. And we can go through a lot of the steps that we take to invite people to open houses. But right now, this is the, 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 the most pressing one. This is the one that everybody's talking about. All right. So done with that. So we talked about Zoom. We talked about Zoom and Google calendars. Now I'm going to give you uh, some other options. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Ali, um, I was going to talk about Videolicious, but I don't know if I have enough time to talk about Videolicious because it's going to take me like another hour to talk about Videolicious, so we may have to do that another day. Uh, I will touch bases on the other uh, platforms other than Videolicious, so everybody knows about it because I only have another 30 minutes to finish, so we're going to have to, we're going to, have to skip Videolicious for now. But I do want to mention, I'm going to go into the um, into video relations right now. Ronnie, so, um, uh, sorry, you can go through those. If you go over time, that's okay. Those who want to stay longer okay. can stay longer. So I think uh, you should take this opportunity to go over the video solutions that are available to uh, the agent. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're going to go into video issues. Thank you for that, Ali. I really appreciate it. So if we go over time, guys, bear with me. I know we said 1230, but I may go into one o'clock. All right, so just bear with me. Now, before we go into video issues, I'm going to go into Google Hangouts. And the reason why is because Google Hangouts connects with Google Calendar, and it works almost the same as Zoom. So I want to finish with this section before I move on to the next section. So we're going to go into Google Hangouts. What is Google Hangouts? Google Hangouts is Google's version of Zoom. Now, I like Google Hangouts when you're dealing on a one-by-one -one case, meaning that if you're virtually meeting with one person, only one person at a time, it works okay. But if you're meeting a bunch of people at the same time, it's not okay. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because I did not find anywhere in Google Hangouts a way to mute people. Meaning that if I had 45 people come into this meeting and I'm not able to mute any of them, you know, that's going to be a problem. Would you agree with me? Because the background noise will be incredible, right? And yes, you can ask people to mute themselves, but they don't do it. You know, they don't do it. So 
So you always need to have the ability to mute people. So Zoom gives you the ability to mute people. Uh, Google Hangouts, I didn't find any ability within the system to Zoom, uh, I mean, to, to mute people. Uh, so you would have to mute ma yourself manually. But, but, here's the but. The but is this. Google Hangouts is a great platform that is free. Number one is free, and I like free. I already told you that many times. I like free. Google Hangouts is a platform that is free, and it works really great when you're doing one-on-one -on -one virtual face-to-face -face meetings because you can use Google Hangouts from your computer. You can use it from your phone, and, and, and basically uh, you can do that. And it also connects with Google calendars, and that's another feature that I like. Let me show you how that works. So we're gonna create a new event. Let me cancel this one. Yeah, discard this one. We're gonna create a new event. So let's say, for example, that you're trying to have a conference with a client, a potential client, right? And, and Zoom is a little too complicated for you and, and all of this, right? Basically, what you want to do is you want to go into your Google calendar because this is already in Google calendars. Like Google Hangouts is already in Google calendars. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to download anything. You don't have to do anything other than create the event. So I'm going to create the event and I'm going to call it Roberto. Roberto uh, Ogaña, let's say, for example, right? And the event is going to be tomorrow, the 26th. And we're going to, uh, him and I, we're going to meet tomorrow at 10, 10 o'clock in the morning to have a conversation. He's thinking about listing his house, et cetera. So I'm going to do it 10 to 11. And I'm going to go to more options. Remember, I always go to more options first, right? And you see what it says here, add conferencing right here, this button right here. You see what it says there, Hangout. All you have to do is click on that button and it would automatically create a Hangout. Uh, give me one second. Uh, okay, Hangout. Give me one second, please. It's supposed to. Okay. Well, it's not working for me. <laughs> give me one second. I try this so many times when I'm, I'm training for the class, and then when it, when it really comes to the class, it doesn't work. That's just funny. All right, let's try again. So Google Hangouts. So we're going to do a Google Hangouts for tomorrow, uh, whatever dates and time. It's okay. I'm going to click on More Options. I'm going to click Add Conference. I'm going to click on Google Hangouts. And once I do that, uh, for some reason, it's not doing it right now. It's supposed to give you the Hangouts description right here with a URL link to register. And it also, and you can also send it to your contact. Now, don't ask me why. I'm not sure why it's not working on this account right now. Um, I may have to join in a different account. But anyways, the bottom line is this. Um, if you click on the button Hangout, it would automatically give you, right here on the description, it's going to give you all the information in regards to the Hangout. This takes literally, guys, this takes literally about 30 seconds to do it. It doesn't take that long. And, and then what you have to do is you have to send that person the invitation. Once you click on save, the invitation is going to go and they will have all the information to join in in the meeting with you. They will receive a reminder, you know, whatever reminders you set up and so on. You, they can receive a reminder. You can add multiple reminders, by the way. Uh, you can send notifications via text message, push notifications on their phone, etc. So you can do that. So Google Hangouts, it's a great, um, a, a great, uh, a, 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 not, I wouldn't say competitor, but a great other option for instead of uh, Zoom. Because in Zoom, you have to go into Zoom, create the event, go through all the steps, etc., which takes time, you know. Google a, a Hangout, you can do it directly from Google Calendars. You don't have to set it up. It gives you the, the URL link, it gives you the phone number to call, and it notifies, automatically notifies the person that you're inviting. So for events or a small event, like you're, you're meeting with three or four or five people, let's say, for example, you're going through an escrow transaction, and, and there's something that is going on and you want everybody to be on the same page, right? You can basically invite everybody to participate into a conference, into a, into a live conference, and you can invite four, five, or six people, right? And all of those people are gonna join you through the uh, Google uh, Hangout um, a page. And they can do that, once again, in the computer. They can do it in the computer, they can do it on their phone. Most people already have a Gmail account, so they don't have to subscribe to it, because it's already, if you have a Gmail account, you already have it. So you can do it from there. So anyways, Google Hangouts is a great another source for um, doing this type of meeting. Let's move to the next one. Uh, the next one is, uh, okay, the next one is very, very important. Okay, this is my second, the second one that I like the most. Videolicious, videolicious. Why videolicious? 
Videolicious is a great, is Videolicious, by the way, is not a software or platform to do conferencing. It's not. Let me put it out there. Okay, it's not. For conferencing, you need uh, Zoom or you need uh, Google Hangouts. Uh, or there's other ones, but those are the most popular ones. Videolicious is a way for you to create videos of yourself communicating information to your clients. It's also a way for you to create property videos that you can you can disseminate or you can send out to many different people. So I'm gonna show you how Videolicious works. And one of the great benefits of Videolicious, I mean, I'm, the best benefit of Videolicious is that Videolicious, it's absolutely free through the Berkshire Hathaway Resource Center. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So if you were to go to be delicious, uh, I'm sorry, uh, not the delicious, but I'm gonna show you a video regarding video delicious. Let me, give me, give me one second. And when I share the screen, uh, give me one second. I'm gonna have to do this again. Hold on, please, one second. You know what? I don't have a way to, um, in this screen here, I don't have a way to share the audio. So I'm not gonna share the audio, but I just want you to see this. What Videolicious does, and, and I'm going to send you, actually, I'm going to send you the link through the chat right now. So let me send you the link through the chat. Uh, let me see the chat here. Uh, let me, what, what is the chat right here? Give me one second. I'm going to send you the link through the chat to everybody. Watch this. Uh, so, okay, this is, this is the video. I don't know if you can hear it. Ali, Ali, can you hear the video or not? Can you tell me if you can hear it? Did you hear it? Um, it's not playing right now, Ronnie. It's, no, but did you hear it when I was when it was playing? Did you hear it or not? No. I'm not sure if you can. No, you okay. So you cannot hear it. It doesn't matter. Uh, let me uh, mute it in my screen. This is what Videolicious does. What Videolicious does is a an app that you can download on your phone or your iPad. And this app, you can create messages for your clients or you can create property uh, property virtual tours for your clients that you can disseminate to them. The benefit of Videolicious, number one, is that Videolicious is free through the BHHS Resource Center. So you don't have to pay for it. It is compatible with Androids and iPhone devices. It's super easy to use. You can watch the video. I put the video link in the, uh, in the chat, so just copy it from there. You can watch the video, it's playing right now. And right now what she's doing is she's basically taking a small pictures and videos of the property. And those pictures and videos, the video delicious is gonna stitch them together and you're gonna be able to create awesome, awesome videos, okay? So now, um, this is what this is. Now I'm gonna show you how to get to it, how to get started and how to make it work. So uh, I'm gonna go into the BHHS Resource Center. So I'm gonna go into BHHS Resource right here. One second. Da, 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 da. Okay, one second. We're gonna go into the BHHS Resource Center right here. All right, one second. Okay, so now what you want to do once you go into the BHHS Resource Center, you go into marketing, into the marketing center. So the marketing center is gonna be right in the middle here on the screen. Give me one second. It's gonna be right here, where it says marketing resource. Do you see where it says marketing resource? So that's where you want to be. Once you go into marketing resource, you're gonna go into video solutions. I think it's called video solutions, I'm not sure. Let me see, one second. Let me pull it up on the screen. Uh, one second, please. So anyways, while he's doing that, so, there's a couple, okay, video creation, I'm sorry, video creation. So this is where you go, video creation right here on the bottom of the screen. You can go into video creation right here, all right? And this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna, you're gonna uh, subscribe to Videolicious. So if you don't have an account, you can sign up. It's absolutely free. You don't have to pay for it. And, and you can subscribe to the account. I already have an account, so it's probably gonna direct me to the login page or the, the, the home page, because I already have an account. So there you go, I already have an account. So I'm gonna sign in to my account. This is my, my, uh, my, this is not my account. This is my test account where I do my testing. So this is where your page for Videolicious is. What can you do with Videolicious? The first, there's two separate things that you can do with Videolicious. The first thing that you can do with Videolicious 
is that you can create recorded messages. You can create recorded video messages that you can share with people. As a matter of fact, let me, let me see if I can do one right now. Let me move this out of the screen. I'm gonna create a video right now. So I'm gonna go to make a video. I'm gonna do a basic video. I'm not gonna customize it or anything just for the example. Videolicious is gonna open your, um, your camera. All right, Videolicious is gonna open your camera. Oh, uh, I cannot probably load the camera right now because I'm using the camera for Zoom, so I'm not gonna be able to do it. But in essence, you can actually record a message to somebody. You can just talk and say, hey, uh, John, you know, it was fantastic meeting you with meeting with you today. I can't wait for the opportunity to help you find a home. Uh, so I just wanted you to know that I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to answer all your phone calls, return all your text messages. And I'm so happy that we had the opportunity to work together. Thank you so much. And then you're going to save it. And once you save it, it's going to be on your library of videos, which is going to be right here. Watch this. It's going to be right here. So your video is going to be there, but also, and this is important, this is very, very important, your video will also be inside of the marketing resource page. I'm going to show you where in a second. So this is where you create the videos, and you can create, like, guys, uh, video is a great thing because it's a great way to communicate with people, especially if you have a lot, a lot of things to say. Like, I have seen agents, and, and I do that sometimes myself. I seen agents send out massive emails, like massive, like, you know, literally like this big. And my question to them is always, why, why don't you just pick up the phone and call them and tell them instead of sending them an email, right? But video is another solution that you can use to send those messages to people. They have the ability to see you. They have the ability to hear you. And I think that is great. So once you create a video, the beautiful thing about Videolicious is that it synchronizes in the Marketing Resource Center so if you go to the library, if you go to the library here, I'm gonna show you the library right now. If you go to the library and you go to my videos or videos in general, you go to my videos, for example, all the videos that you create, whether you created them through the platform, Videolicious Online, which is the one that I just show you right now, or the phone app, which you have a phone app on your phone that you can download, are gonna be under my library and it's gonna be under the videos. So if you go to video, um, let me go here into videos, uh, video right here. If you go to your library and you go to videos, the videos that you have created are gonna be there, all right? Now this is my test account, so I don't have that many of them there, but you're gonna create it there. Here's the next thing. If you create a video using Videolicious on your phone, using the account that you created from within the resource center. By the way, you have to create the account in resource center first because they're gonna give you a code that you're gonna need to input on your phone when you download video issues on your phone. Otherwise, it's not gonna synchronize. Let me repeat that again to make sure everybody knows. You have to go to the resource center first. You have to go into marketing resource. You have to go into video creation you have to create an account with Videolicious through the Resource Center. Once you create an account with Videolicious through the Resource Center, Videolicious is gonna give you a specific code. Once you have that code, you go to your phone, you download the app from your phone, and you're gonna enter the code they give you, and watch this, once you enter the code, your phone videos that you created in Videolicious on your platform on the phone, are going to automatically upload into the VHHS Resource Center. Why is that important? This is why this is important. The reason why this is important is because now you can use those videos to create e-cards that you can send out to your contact. Let me show you how to do that. One second. If I go here and I go to uh, type of, uh, type of uh, what do you call it, um, a, a type, a template type, I'm gonna go to eCard, okay? I'm gonna go to eCard, and when I go to eCard, I'm gonna put the keywords video ready, video ready, so watch this. I'm gonna find all the eCards that are video ready, okay? Video, I misspell video, one second. Video ready, okay? Oh, there you go, okay. So now, all of these eCards here, all of these e-cards are video ready. And obviously it has to be an e-card, it cannot be a flyer because a flyer you print it, an e-card you send it via email. All of these e-cards right here are video ready. That means that you can upload a video on each one of these e-cards. So watch this now. I'm gonna show you one thing, one little trick 
that you should know that is important. I'm gonna take this, this flyer right here. This flyer has four properties, or the flyer shows that it has four properties, right? But this flyer is video ready. I think it, it should be somewhere around here that says that it's video ready. Um, I'm, I'm not sure where it says, let's see, MNS and video enabled. There you go, video enabled, right there. So this e card is video enabled. That means that you can put a video inside of this flyer. So I'm gonna get started right now. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna just gonna, I'm gonna do one for the property that we have. So uh, fifth, uh, what is it, uh, 15, 14, oh, geez, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. I'm too lazy. Uh, so I'm gonna copy this one here, copy that, okay? So now watch this, here we go. All right, so now I'm going to paste it there, the address. Now watch this, what I'm gonna do right now. This is the e-card that I'm gonna send a client with uh, properties that just came on the market. You can, you guys can do this on new properties that come on the market. You don't have, you don't have to do it like every day, but if you do this like once a month, I think this is a great strategy. So you can choose listings. If you have listings in the MLS, you can choose them. Or if you, if you don't, you can just upload pictures. So I'm just gonna upload pictures here of a couple of properties. I'm gonna do four. I think four is a good round number. It's not too many, it's not too little. I'm gonna upload a first picture for one property. So I'm gonna pick one property from my, my library of pictures. And I'm not gonna do all of them. I'm just gonna show you this, how to do this, okay? So I'm gonna pick one. Give me one second. Uh, so I'm gonna go to my library of pictures. I'm just gonna pick one um, from the list. So this one here. Now let's try this, uh, let's try a different one. Let's try this a different angle. Let's try this angle right here. So I'm gonna pick on that one. Let me move the screen here a little bit because this thing is in the middle of my, give me one second, this thing is in the middle of my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna pick that one. So I uploaded that picture. So what you do is you upload the pictures, all right? Uh, give me one second. It's, it's processing right now, so it's gonna take about 30 seconds to do that. And you upload like three or four properties in there, or you upload three properties in there, but the first one that you upload is not gonna be a property, it's gonna be the video that you created. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, the internet is a little bit slow right now. It says processing, it may take a few seconds. Um, let me see if I can get out of it. Okay, I'm gonna get out of it. So let me give you the, the instructions, all right? So you put a picture of a property here. You put another picture of another property here. You put another picture of another property here. And in here, the first one, you don't put a picture, you put a video. How do you put the video? You go to search, you go to search, and then you go here to the top where it says videos, videos right here. And if you have a video delicious account and you have created videos, all of the videos that you have created are gonna be here. And you pick one of the videos that you have created. I don't have any right now on this account, but if you create a video, what you can do is you can click on the video that you created, you add it into the flyer, and guess what's gonna happen now? What's gonna happen now is when they open the flyer, when you send them the flyer and they open the flyer, the video will automatically start talking. And this is the great way of communicating with people, market activity, you're following up on sellers, this is what you do. Once a month, you pick up you know, three or four properties, new listings on the market, and you don't even have to do that. You don't even have to pull properties because there's other templates there that you can use. There's one called market, uh, market, uh, market data or something like that. I don't know, I'm just gonna pick one at random here. So you can find it there, but watch this. You pick this flyer right here, it's called market update, and instead of sending them a boring video about the market, what you can do is you can be the boring video. I'm just kidding, <laughs> don't be the boring video. But you can be the one talking on the video. So I'm gonna show you this one right here. One second. So look at this, this is an e-card that you can send. You send it once a month to those potential sellers that you have and with a market update report. And in here, you, you put in here the video, you know, uh, search videos and you put the video that you want to send them. I'm just gonna pick one at random. I'm gonna choose the, the smallest one uh, so it doesn't take too much bandwidth. So I'm gonna click okay. This is the video and once they see the video, uh, let me see, let me make sure all of these things are done. Okay, hold on. It's, I'm sorry, it's still working on it. So give it, let's give it a second, okay? So let's do this. I'm gonna 
Let's cancel that. Okay, here I'm gonna just put test. All right, so test. I'm gonna show you how this is done, right? Test, and then the title subject line is um, market update. So market update, watch this. So all I'm doing right now is creating a flyer. Let me make sure everything is done. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like once you send it, okay? It's ready to be sent. So I'm gonna post, I'm gonna uh, go to the link right here. I'm gonna share. And you will, you will see what it what it looks like once you send it over to your contacts. Okay, Bidilicious is fantastic. If you guys are not using it, I don't know why not. So let me show you here what it looks like once you have the link open, all right, the link that they give you. This is what consumers are gonna see when they open their email. This is gonna come out, the video is gonna come out, and, and you are gonna be talking in the video and talk, giving, a, giving them a market update. And it's gonna be you. Like I said, it's not gonna be a boring video, you know, somebody else talking about the market and what they're doing, et cetera, et cetera. It's gonna be you. And I think that's important because you get, they get an opportunity to see you and that's important. So there you go. That's the video right there. It's gonna start playing. As soon as they open the, the email, the video start gonna start playing and it's customized with your information. And this is, this is simple. I'm gonna recap right now. This is what you do. Okay, I'm gonna recap. I'm gonna go back to the beginning. The first thing that you do is you, you log into the BHHS Resource Center. That's the first thing that you do. You log into the Resource Center. You go into Marketing Resource. After you go into Marketing Resource, you go into Video Creation. Video Creation. Give me one second. Give me one second. Right here, under Video Creation, right here. You click on Video Creation. That's gonna take you to the Videolicious page. You're gonna create an account. I already have an account, so you, 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 I don't have to create it again, but you create an account. And once you create an account, it's gonna bring you to this page right here. This page right here, which is the video, Videolicious homepage online, basically. You can create a video from here. You can create as many videos as you want. You can create videos. And once the video is created, it would automatically synchronize with the BHHS Resource Center all right, I'm gonna show you that in a second. Another thing you can do is you can download the Video Vicious app on your phone. You're gonna need a code that they're gonna give you once you register, they're gonna give you a code so you can use it for your app. You can register your phone with your phone app with that code and any Video Vicious videos that you create on your phone as you're doing virtual showings. This is virtual showings basically, or virtual showing videos. You go around the house and you take pictures or videos and you talk and Videolicious automatically convert, they stitch them all the pictures together and automatically convert them into a video. And I think that's a great thing. The best thing about this is that both the Videolicious homepage and the Videolicious home, uh, the Videolicious app, both of the videos synchronize with your BHHS Resource Center. So you can use those videos within the library to send out flyers to consumers. So let me show you that in a second, how did that work? So if you go to the library, and you go to my library and you go to my videos, the videos are gonna be there. Whatever video you created is gonna be there. So the videos are gonna be there. And from here, you can send them to your contacts by emailing them to your contacts. You can copy the link so you can copy and paste it in a text message so you can send it to a text message. Uh, we actually, we're actually thinking about doing another class on text messaging because I think that's important, uh, but that's not this class, but I'm gonna show you some tricks in regards to how to send uh, things by text message. So you can go to your library here. Once you go to your library here, you go to your videos, you know, the, the videos that you created. So uh, go to type and go to videos right here. And it's gonna show you a list of all the videos that you have created or, or email or e-flyers that you have created with videos, okay? Uh, if you wanna create a new flyer with a video, you do e car right here, you do e car and then you can put video, uh, I think it's called video enable. So video enable is the keyword to find them. And once you click search, it's gonna give you all the e-cards within the system that have video enable capabilities. And you can use any of these e-cards to create a video message to your clients. And look at this one here, it says open house, and you can actually create a video there. This is another great, fantastic, awesome way, and I love it. 
I love Videolicious because number one is free. And you, if you all know me, you know how I like free, right? So this is free, number one. And number two is so easy to use. It's so dang easy to use. If you go here, you click on create a video, you create a video, save the video, you go to your library, you'll find the video, you can email it, you can text it, you can create a flyer around the video, etc. Can you do the same thing with the Zoom meeting? Let's talk about the Zoom meeting for a second. Can you do the same thing with the Zoom meeting? Absolutely. You can actually create a, a, a video card that says, hey guys, I'm having an open house this weekend. I wanted to invite you to the open house, register below. And in the property description, you put the link for registration. Isn't that a great thing? All right, I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it because I think this is great. It doesn't, once you, once you learn how to use it, it doesn't take too much time. Yes, I understand some of you may feel overwhelmed about this systems and oh my God, this looks complicated. How am I gonna do it? Yes, it's, you know, the first time you do it, it's gonna take you about four hours because I know that it took me almost four hours to figure it out, right? The second time I did it, it took me three hours. The third time I did it, it took me two hours. The fourth time I did it, it took me an hour. Now it takes me like five minutes. At the end, it's gonna take you about five minutes. And yes, you will make mistakes along the way. Believe me, I have made mistakes. Remember that I told you that I created a, I created a calendar, a, a, a Zoom meeting, and I dated it at 12 a.m. in the morning, and everybody keeps texting me back, and it's like, hey, Ronnie, your meeting says it's at 12 a.m., and I'm like, oh, shoot, you know, I made a mistake, right? You will make mistakes along the way, but you know what? By making mistakes, by practicing, by doing it over and over again, that's the only way that we learn. You know, me teaching you this stuff, I'm not even teaching you. What I'm doing is giving you a demonstration of the things that can be done. In reality, you're going to have to teach yourself how to do this because you're going to have to go there and try it out and make sure that it works for you and that you do it right. And unfortunately, that's the way it's supposed to be. So anyway, so we're just, once again, this is mostly a presentation of what the things that you can do. Any questions regarding video issues before I move on to the next topic? Any questions, Ali? Ronnie, um, yes. Um, someone asked the benefit of video licious versus taking a video on your phone and sending it. Um, and I'll say I'll answer the first question. The first, um, the first, uh, what I'll say that the benefit of video licious versus a uh, regular video is that it's branded. Mm -hmm. You get a branded mm -hmm. version of your video. And then, Ronnie, I don't know if you want to um, mention other benefits of video licious versus. Oh my God! Yeah, video. no, absolutely. So watch this now. When you let me tell you this. When you record a video on your phone, and you recorded the video, this, okay, now the question is, okay, what do I do with the video? I recorded the video. Anybody can record a video from their phone, right? Anybody can. What can you do with the video though? Okay, the video is residing on your phone. What can you do with the video? Can you send it via text message? You can, but the resolution is gonna be crappy. Can you upload it into YouTube? And we're gonna go into YouTube in a second. Yeah, you can upload it into YouTube. That's perfectly fine, right? But YouTube is gonna be branded with YouTube stuff. And as a matter of fact, when you send it via YouTube, they're gonna be bombarded with ads from YouTube, right? They're gonna have ads in YouTube, right? If you download video issues on your phone and you take a video with your phone using video issues, the, the video still resides in your phone. Can you send it out by text message? Yes, you can. Can you say, upload it to YouTube? Absolutely, but the benefit is this. Like Ali says, the first benefit is that Videolicious automatically brands the video with the company logos at the beginning and at the end. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I have a video here that I wanted to show you regarding that, but it brands it with the company logos at the beginning and at the end. That's the first thing, so it's branded. Number two, once you create a video in, in your phone or, or in the computer, either one, it automatically uploads into the BHHS Resource Center. What can you do in the BHHS Resource Center? Guys, you can create an, a flyer. You don't have to create a flyer. You can just go to the video and, and share it through the BHHS Resource Center. You can create a flyer. You can upload contacts into your contact database in the BHHS Resource Center. So you can send them uh, by email or text message or whatever, right? So you can go and, and, and upload contacts here. So you can send it through the BHHS Center, you can send it through the contacts, you can, um, you can create an e-flyer, you can customize and make it look nice, you can create a web page, because this ultimately is a web page. Uh, this one right here is a web page that you can share with people. And like I said, in another class, I'm gonna teach you how to share this through uh, text messaging, because that's a whole nother class that I'm not gonna do today. 
but I'm gonna teach you how to create this and send it via text message. Ronnie, right? that class will be next Saturday, okay? Next Saturday, okay, wonderful. Yay, yay, Ali. Everybody say yay, Ali, okay? Because I've been I've been asking Ali to put the class together. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna teach you the specific steps that you need to use to send things through text messaging. So what are the benefits of using video relations versus just taking a video on, on your phone? Number one, compression. Compression is important because you can you can send a video delicious ad through text messages that is not gonna lose resolution. If you if you send a video through your phone, it's gonna lose resolution, it's gonna be so grainy, it's gonna stop every three seconds, it's just gonna be hor a horrible, horrible experience. So the first thing is compression. The second thing is branding. It's gonna be branded with the company logos and with your information. Number three, it automatically it automatically uploads into the VHHS Resource Center so you can use that video to create flyers, e-flyers, and marketing materials. And isn't that a great thing? And finally, number four, and the most important thing of all, it's free. It's free. It's free. So, I mean, why not use it, right, Ali? Any other questions before I move on? Yes. Um, one last question. Can we add the video in the MLS listing and then somebody's asking if you can show us the open house that you did. Right. Uh, well, uh, okay, let's just start with the first question. Can you add a video into the MLS? The answer is absolutely yes. Yes, absolutely. If you go to property description, I I'm, I'm in the MLS right now. I'm editing one of my listings right now. So you see that right now, right? If you go into, into the uh, MLS, into the edit your listing, and you go into the property description, you see where it says here, virtual tour. You can add the virtual tour that you created into there. But watch this, watch this is very, very important because I don't want you to make a mistake and get fined by a violation. There's two places for virtual tours. The first one is a unbranded virtual tour. Unbranded means no, it doesn't have your information or your phone number or your company information or anything like that. Unbranded means literally unbranded, meaning that it doesn't have any information other than the pictures that you created. So if you're gonna create one on video issues, this is not the place to put it. This is not the place to put it because this is gonna be, video issues is actually gonna brand it with your information and your company information and your picture and your name and your phone number, email address, et cetera, et cetera. So this is not the place to put it. The place to put it is right here under syndication remarks. Do you see where it says here syndication remarks right here? And video tour, this is where you put your branded video tour. So yes, the answer is absolutely, positively yes. You can create a video delicious, a walkthrough of the property and you can get the link from Video Delicious, which you will get the link from Video Delicious. Get the link, copy and paste it in here. And now this video that you created that is branded with your name, your information, you even talk on the video, say, hey guys, if you want to make an offer on the property, give me a call at this number, 562-762-9634. You can actually do that on the, under the branded video tour in the MLS. Once you do that, that information is gonna spread over to all of the web, all of the real estate websites out there, you in essence are bidding at this point. You in essence bidding uh, a Zillow, Trulia, Homes.com at their own game because it's going to be your video with your information branded to you, etc. That is going to be showing on their sites, and people are most likely to call you than to call the other people that are showing up on on, on Zillow. So if you're not doing this on your listings. I don't know the reason why you're not not doing it. You should be doing it on every listing that you have. Okay, Ali, another question. Ali, no, no, Ronnie, continue. Okay, so the uh, so all right, so let's recap a little bit before we move on to the next to the next couple of ones or the the, the next uh, couple of uh, uh, places. So we talked about Zoom, how to create a Zoom meeting how to add it to your Google Calendar, how to create a Zoom from Google Calendar, how to create a Hangout from Google Calendar. We talked about video delicious. Uh, uh, we talked about video delicious and all the benefits of it. Now let's talk about the, the last couple of systems that I have for you here. I got some goodies here for you. Uh, and by the way, this presentation, I'm gonna repeat again. How do you get this presentation? All you have to do to get this presentation, you go to my website, which is reas.app, you subscribe for a free account, a free account, 
And once you subscribe to the free account on the menu, you will see uh, a link that says COVID-19 resources. It's called COVID-19 resources. And in there, you're going to find all the information that I just did, I, I just explained to you right now. And the video solutions class um, document is right there. And this document will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to create a Zoom meeting. Let's talk about a couple of other options other than Zoom, other than uh, Google Hangouts, and other than video issues. The next one. I'm gonna, uh, this is a, a listing cake. Let's talk about listing cake for a little bit. Listing cake is a free software that you can use to create awesome video of property, property video. It is customized with your information. And I know you can do that with a BHHS resource. You can, if you wanted to, but I'm here to give you choices because everybody likes different things and everybody understands different things at different levels. So what's this listing cake is a software that I absolutely love to create really fast, and I mean really, really, really fast videos of properties. It doesn't cost you anything, it's absolutely free, and, and you can basically create a property video. Once you learn how to use it, you can properly create a property video in about, I don't know, five minutes or so, and it's super, super simple to use. So let me, let me show you how it goes. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna upload the pictures. So we're gonna upload the pictures of the property. So I'm gonna pick one of the, uh, the the same property we're doing right now. So I'm gonna upload all these pictures. And by the way, you, you can just highlight all of the pictures all together and upload them into the system. So right now it's uploading the pictures. I shouldn't do that many. Okay, well, it's moving fast. I thought the internet was gonna be slow, but it's moving a little bit fast. So you upload all of the pictures. I'm gonna show you how to create a property video in three minutes or less using listing cake. It's fantastic. So once you create the, okay, so once the, uh, are, uh, they are uploaded, once they're uploaded, you can go to the next. So I'm gonna go to save and continue. And now I'm gonna create the layout. Which layout do you like? And, and there's plenty of layouts. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna make this big so you can see there. There's plenty of layout that you can use. Oh, that's too big. All right, there you go. So there's this layout, which is a simple layout with uh, very little branding. This one here, this one here. The one that I like the most is actually this one right here. So I'm gonna use the polished red. So that's the one that I'm gonna be using. Let me make the screen smaller so you can see it again. Okay, so I selected the layout. I'm gonna save and continue. I select the music. Uh, there's different library of music that I'm just gonna pick one at random because this is just an example. I'm gonna click save and continue. I'm gonna put the information here. So all of my information, and by the way, my computer already saved my information. So all the information is there. Property information is there. So I'm gonna put, uh, you know, 7514 uh, UL Street, which is the one that we're doing. Uh, so that, 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 in Downey, California, 90241, and then four bedrooms, three bathrooms, listing price, um, 690, for example, property type, single family residence, and the website. Now, on the website, now watch this, on the website, you can actually add the link to the virtual tour if you wanted to. If this is a promotion for the virtual tour, you can do that. Or if you want to put the URL for the property, uh, if you have a website for the property or something, you can put the URL there. So right now, I'm just gonna use the same um, uh, URL, the same link for, that I created uh, from uh, Zoom. I'm just gonna post it in there, right? And now, I'm gonna save and continue, and then I'm gonna create, I'm gonna click on Create Video Tour. Now, the video tour is gonna be created, let me give you one second, and this is the link for the video, by the way. It's gonna be created, Give me one second. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's gonna take about three minutes, maybe four minutes for the for the video to be created. And once the video is created, it's gonna look. Um, let me see if I can go back here. It's gonna look. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Let me open my other my my phone and see if they send me the link already. It takes about three minutes to do it. So I'm gonna open it here. But what I'm trying to say is. Do you see how easy that was? I mean, it's like one, two, three, four. It's so, that's the reason I like Listing Cake. And Listing Cake is free. You don't pay anything for that. It's absolutely free. Boy, if you're not using it, I don't know why you're not using it. So um, let me see. Actually, you know what? I think I had, give me one second. I think I have it under my uh, YouTube. I had one that I created. Let me see if I find it. Hold on one second, please. I have it under my YouTube account. I'm gonna show you one that I created so you can see it. And so once it's created, you're gonna receive an email with the URL link for the video that you can now 
upload it into YouTube, you can send it via email, you can post it in social media. I mean, you can do whatever you want with that. So give me one second here. Um, let me see if I can find it, my team homes. Okay, it's under my um, home channel. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's see. One second. Uh, it's not this one. What is it? I know it's here somewhere. Ah! All right, I should have picked it up before. Let me see. Uh, let's try this. Okay, let me see. Okay, here it is. I found it. Okay, let me show it to you. This is the video that I created using it. And you don't hear the music, but this is the video. And, and it takes all of the pictures and create basically a virtual a virtual uh, showing of the property, you know, and it has all of your information. Look at this here. Property details for bedroom, three bathrooms, single family plus guest house, price for sale, address. And then it gives you my uh, my name and, and uh, my phone number in here, et cetera. And, and all of this, and this video was created using Listing Cake and it literally takes about, literally takes about three minutes to do it. It doesn't take that long. Anyway, so I'm, I wanted to show you that. So Listing Cake is another great way of creating property videos, uh, adding music. You can also add your own description of the property. So if you're really, really handy with your phone and so on, you can go to your phone and record a message like, hi, thank you for visiting my property at 123 Main Street, whatever. And this is a four bedroom, three bathroom home. And you can record that and then upload it from your phone, upload it into Listing Cake by going into music and adding your own, uh, adding your own uh, uh, audio into it. I know there's a way to do it somewhere here. So anyway, so Listing Cake is a great way to do uh, property videos really, really fast. It only takes about three minutes. Do you have any questions regarding Listing Cake before I move on to the next one? Ali? No questions, Ronnie. Okay, wonderful. All right, let's go to the next one here, and we're, we're almost uh, we're almost done. Bear with me, we're almost done. Uh, YouTube. Now, YouTube is also free, and yes, you can uh, you can create videos on your phone. You can upload it into YouTube. If you guys don't have a YouTube account, you should have a YouTube account. I have like three or four of them where I upload different things. You know, I have one for my family and another one for my business and so on. So you you should have YouTube. You can create an account with YouTube. YouTube has an app called uh, Video Creator, which is a fantastic, fantastic app. It's a separate app than YouTube. YouTube is an app on itself, but for people who are creating videos, there's another app called uh, YouTube, uh, Video Creator. Let me see where is it. It's called it's called YT Cre it's, I'm sorry. It's called YT Studio. YT Studio. YT YouTube. YT Studio. And through the through the app, YouTube, YT Studio. You can also add, you can edit, you can, if you're really, really handy, and this is more complex for more sophisticated people in, in regards to software. I usually don't use it a lot because it's like sophisticated and I like simple stuff. I don't like complicated stuff. So watch this. So, but in, in, in YT Creator, you can upload videos, you can edit them, you can add messages to the videos, you can add links to the videos. You can do a lot of things, you know, all the things that you have seen other people do, like the big dogs, you know, like, uh, you know, like a, uh, a farmer's insurance or whatever, you know, they do all these videos and they have links in the videos and they have a uh, pop outs that come out on the video. You can do all of that with YouTube, uh, YouTube um, a creator, or in this case, it's called YouTube Studio, YT Studio. So that's another, another uh, way, great way to do it. Okay, these two right here, I'm not going to talk about, we're, we're going to end the meeting right now. But I'm going to give them to you so you can search them. Bomb bomb. What is bomb bomb? Bomb bomb is a place where you can actually create videos and you can distribute them through all of the social media, through all of the emails, etc. There is a subscription per month, which is fifty dollars. I put it in there because people keep asking about it. But quite honestly, if you're going to subscribe to bomb bomb, don't subscribe to the BHHS Resource Center first and and use the video issues, which is pretty much the same thing, but it's going to be free. And finally, B Screen. B Screen is another. B Screen is a video creator company, and what they do is they they create marketing videos for you. And the subscription ranges from anywhere between thirty nine dollars to seventy nine dollars a month. This is another great company. If you have you know if you have fifty dollars to eighty bucks a month that you you want to spend that you don't that you don't have nothing to do with, you know this is another great thing that you can do. Uh, video content solutions. So what they do basically is they do all kinds of videos. They do um, marketing videos, you know, how the market is. You know, have you received those videos? It's like 
the, the market today and it gives you the amount of listings and sales and things like that, they do that. They also do community videos. You know, they do videos in regards to the community that you live in, you know, by zip code or, or areas. So they do uh, videos in regards to uh, local events. Uh, they do also forecasts, you know, for the weather, weather forecasting and things like that. Uh, they do also um, Yelp reviews and things like that. So they create all of these videos for you. Then you have also listing videos that you can create, like the one that I just show you with listing cake. They can do those for you. And they also have advice videos, you know, how to buy a home, the steps to purchase a home, the steps to sell a home, etc. So they have a library of hundreds of videos that are already made that you can create and you can post in your system. And access to those videos, like I said, through this, uh, through this um, company, the pricing is somewhere between, I think it's 29, was it 29 or 39? $39 a month, between $39 a month and $79 a month. Yeah, there you go. Between $39 a month to $79 a month, depending on the package that you should. So if you uh, want to use video to communicate with clients, but you don't want to do it yourself, because like, oh my God, I don't want to do it myself. I don't have time to do it. I don't know how to do it or whatever. You can hire this company to do the videos for you. And all you have to do is share the videos. They give them to you basically ready-made. All you have to do is click a button and send them over. And yes, you can send them through all your social media, social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, email, you know, whatever, Instagram, whatever. You can send them through all of those. Uh, and they create the videos for you. You don't have to create them. They're all customized with your picture and your information. And they actually say in the video, um, this video was provided to you by Mona Botros. And they, they actually say your name so, uh, through the video because that's what they do. They create videos for you. So since, since this class is about video creation and video, you know, video resources, I thought about bringing it up because this is a great company to go with if you don't, like I said, if you don't want to do your own videos, you don't have time to do your own videos. So you're just like, oh my God, I don't know how to do this, right? Well, you can also hire a company to do it for you. Do we have any questions regarding that before we finish? There's no questions, Ronnie. No questions, all right. So I guess everybody's clear on this. Um, I do apologize if I was going a little bit fast at the beginning or throughout the entire training. Uh, but I'm always pressed for time, like Ali says, you know, I, I, there's so much that I want to share with you guys. Here's another resource also. Uh, if you go to my uh, if you go to my training website, there is tons, and I mean literally tons of information. Let me log into my website here for a second. There is tons of video resources and information that you can go in there. Um, so let me see. Uh, oh, I, I'm logging into the wrong account. Let me log into the right account. One second. Uh, boy, I have a lot of windows open. Give me one second here. So if you go here and um, if you go into the training library, which is the video training library, there is tons of resources in how to do things. Um, I don't discourage you from doing this live event because these live events are fantastic. But if you want recorded events, uh, if you go to access all videos, there's a lot of videos in there on how to do stuff uh, uh, that are, that are going to be great uh, if you, you can watch them. Like I, I was telling everybody in the office, Ali, I don't know if you, if you, if you feel the same way. I said, you know, we are sequestered at home right now, like meaning that we're working from home for the most part. And I said, and a lot of people are at home, they're not prospecting, which by the way, you should be prospecting regardless, but they're not prospecting. And instead of being at home doing nothing, why don't you be at home and pull out some of these videos, watch some of these videos so you can learn something. So when the mark, when, when they start, when they release us and we start doing business again, you already know what you're doing. This is the, this is a great time to learn all the things that we need to learn. All right, so that's another resource. But anyways, uh, if there's no other questions, I thank you so much for the time that you gave me today. I will see you guys next Saturday. We're gonna be doing texting, texting next Saturday. I'm gonna teach you how to do texting, how to do it the right way, how, which systems to use, what are the easiest systems to use, et cetera, et cetera. If you want a copy of this, uh, of today's class, and uh, you cannot get it through my website or whatever, send me an email. And I'm always, uh, I'll send it over to you if you want it. Thank you so yeah, much. We'll upload it to Mohan it. Academy, Ronnie. Yes, wonderful. We're going to upload it to Mohan. Guys, if you haven't gone to Mohan Academy, I don't know why not. Because Mohan Academy is free, number one. And all of our classes, that, not all of them, but most of our classes are uploaded into Mohan Academy. So if you go to www.mohanacademy.com, 
you should go there and, and watch all of the videos that we have from all of the trainers, not only myself, but we have fantastic trainings in the trainers in the company and you should be there. So thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.